In this episode of the How to Think podcast, we had Andy Stickle on, who is the founder of Social Firestarter. He does marketing for lawyers, and he was able to go from a $1 million a year business to a $4 million a year business to now a million dollars a month and projected $24 million this year. And we sat for about two hours and we talked about a lot of things. We talked about uh, growing businesses. We talked about mindset. We talked about um, managing and dealing with employees and just everything in between as well as how he got started. And we told a lot of uh, awesome stories about uh, growing and leveling up. And I really think that you're going to enjoy this, this sit down interview. So with that said, let's jump right in. This is How to Think. Andy Stickle. What's it up, going? my man? How been you doing? It's been a while. And it has been a while. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I'm really excited you came on because uh, you, were, you were my client for like years. I, I, take, I take pride in being your number one client. <laughs> you, are, <I> <laughs> you are. You are. <laughs> yeah. You are. So um, it's really cool because I recall like when, when we started working together, mm. you know, you were very ground floor. And now you're just you're just absolutely crushing it. I mean, you did. Um, uh, I know that you did. What did you do last year with your? Because you have a, you have a software. Yeah. You have a coaching company. You have a done for you agency. Mm -hmm. uh, and last year was good, but this year is like ridiculous. Like what? What did you do last yeah, year? Yeah. So we did we did four million last year. When I started with you, we were at about a million, I think. Um, and that was 2000, when was AdCon? It was AdCon oh, is when I, ancient history. I hired you at, you know, okay. So you know the whole story about how I saw, I, I knew who Dan Henry was and I was like, this guy's a douchebag. Like, I don't, I don't know this <laughs> <Thanks>. guy. And <laughs> then, like, so, and then I bought, and then I, and then I went to AdCon cause I live in Lakeland, which is, I don't know, like an hour from here. And I'm, I'm the type of person, and this is one of the secrets of my success is that I understand that I can learn something from everybody. And AdCon was going to be there, and I was like, "All right, it's cool." I think you were doing like a Black Friday deal or something on AdCon, so I got I got a ticket for it. Um, and I went to AdCon, and I was watching you, and I was like, "I was like, this guy actually does know what he's talking about. Like, it's pretty clear this guy actually knows a thing or two here." So you know what's funny about that is I talked to Ty Lopez once, okay, and he said that when he was starting out, because he's very different now, just yeah. like I'm very different now. Yeah. When he oh, was starting like, he out, he was like Pier One and like, uh, yeah, it's like massive. ridiculous what he's doing now. So you know? smart, yeah. So when he started out with what he was doing, he said that he knew his market. His market was like 18 to 25 year old males. Mm -hmm. And that basically, if he was to act all smart, they would get turned off. Yeah. So he kind of had to act. I mean, he played dumb. He played <laughs> dumb. He kind of acted like a douche because he was, I hate to sell this, but he was selling to douches. Right, so, yeah. so that was his strategy. And I always thought like, wow, to put your ego aside mm -hmm. and be able to do that um, and do it because you know that that's how you're attacking your market mm -hmm. and you know you're smarter, you know you're more into you, you know, you can articulate yourself in a more intelligent way, mm -hmm. but you suppress that because you, you know your market. I think that, that like, that's a lot of discipline there. Yeah. Um, and so, but like, I think anybody, you kind of get sick of that market, you grow out of it. Mm -hmm. And um, when I started realizing that I could attract, you know, better people, um, not that there's anything wrong with being, I mean, I was male in 18 to 25 mm. at one point, but you know, when you, I, I, I didn't want to work with people that, just wanted like Lamborghinis and stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know, I wanted to work with people who wanted to create great products. And so I changed mm -hmm. my whole thing a bit and um, just like he did and a lot of people do. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, it was, I, I mean, I've, like, I've heard that a lot. Like, yeah, I mean, I just didn't, I, you know, I mean, you know what you, you know, it's like, you know, and, and you've even talked about this even more recently on your social media about you don't know somebody you really just don't know somebody from basically their on-screen persona, right. right? Whether they're an actor or or athlete or or an entrepreneur or whatever, you know. So, but I went to AdCon and I was like, oh, this guy really actually knows what he's talking about. And I'm the type of person where, like, if I want to learn something, you know, there's that Tony Robbins quote where if you want to be successful, find somebody who's already done exactly what you want to do and just copy what they've done, right? So, um, or maybe it's hire them and tell them, whatever yeah, it's, it was. It's, it's copy <laughs> it's, them. I always, yeah. and I say, Dan Henry says, if you really want to be good at it, just pay, pay them whatever them. they yeah, want. Yeah. So I don't know what the actual quote it. is. I think the quote is copy. And I don't, I don't yeah. like, I don't model. like the copy. 
I don't like the copy in there because you get in, like, I think a lot of people think that like funnel hacking is literally just copying. And I've, I know you've had that. I've had it that is, happen though. where it it's really just copying. Is. That's yeah. what it turned into. That's what it turned into. But I don't think that was ever the intention. I think it was basically look and see, no. you yeah. know, it's like, I, and I still funnel hack. I'll look and see like, uh, you know, this market is like, somebody's doing this cool thing in this market. That's neat. I'm not going to, steal their copy word for word. I'm not going to steal their landing page, but I'll take that idea. And I'm like, okay, that's really cool. How can I apply that to what I'm trying to do? And it just, you know, it's like that book, um, steal like an artist, you know what I mean? Right. Um, right. so, but, um, well, I don't it's sort of I'm like saying. if you ever go to the gym yeah. and you see people doing like flies mm -hmm. and instead of doing them properly, they're like this, yeah, yeah. you know, that's the equivalent to properly like that. That's what I see in the online business industry is everybody's pretty much like, no, no, I'm do I'm marketing. And it's mm -hmm. like, no, you're just making crappy products yeah, yeah. and stealing other people's stuff. And you just, you kind of suck. So. And, and what I found is that typically <laughs> the typically when you're just copying, when you're not actually doing the work, then you end up, you don't have any more moves. You know what I mean? Like, so. Right, exactly. Yeah. You, you, you do. You, that's exactly right. You, <laughs> that, that's you, what happens to me all the time. People steal my stuff. People steal your, I'm sure people steal your stuff oh, all yeah. the time. You know? Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, it's, it's, it, I guess it's flattering at this point. Yeah. Uh, but let, let's, let's, so you did 4 million last year, but you're on track to do what? 24 million this year? So we're going to, yeah, we'll, we'll do, I mean, barring a, yeah, we're going to do 24 million this year, you know? Um, now that's, few things have happened. I mean, you know, my company's being acquired. I now own a piece of a bigger company, but, um, yeah, we're, we're on pace to do 24 million that's insane. by the end of this that's year. So yeah, that's, that's going from money. doing a million a year to now doing 2 million a month, you know, and, uh, now we, 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 we spoke before this started, you said the, the, if you were to separate that out, you got software coaching mm. and you got, uh, done for you. The majority of that is done for you. Yeah, the major well, the major I would say 60% is done for you. I'd say 30% is going to be coaching and then 10% is going to be a uh, uh, software. But we're, you know, what do you charge for your software? So the software right now, we're, we're making some transitions because what we were doing is we were charging $3,000 a year. And basically I was just like, I learned really marketing from you. So what I did was I was do I did uh, ad webinar phone call, right? right. <laughs> so, um, so we were selling it at 3000. Well, we started at 1000 and we started uh, 20 then we went to 2500, then we went to 3000. Eventually my 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 plan was to get it up to 10,000 a year. And we're still going to get to that point, but what we're trying to do right now is we're actually going to probably drop the price to like 249 a month right now and just get it on a reoccurring revenue model because we want to get as many users as possible. And it's easier what we found is when we're doing it at 249 for the market that we're in we're able to sell it a lot more at 249 than 3k up front, you know. So 249 per month. 249 per month, yeah. Which is basically the same thing. It's still $3,000 a year. It's just a monthly revenue model. Um, but what we're trying to do and you know, we're trying to make it that we're looking at how can we make our clients stickier? Cuz that's the biggest problem with monthly recurring revenues, how do you keep the clients, you know? So we have contracts and everything. But what we're really trying to do is we're trying to figure out what kind of software can we do so that, you know, we can provide we can provide lots of software for them that they really use so that they're not going to want to leave and that's the software that we have is like yeah. it's like revolutionary in terms of getting reviews for law firms because it's that's that's what we do we figured out the problem is that lawyers can't get reviews we on should Google. probably mention who you market <laughs> you're, you're, yeah, I, mar <laughs> I mentioned for i work for lawyers yeah <laughs> you do marketing for lawyers yeah, yeah. so um that so for, for like for my app how to think you mm -hmm. know i think about it and i'm like uh you know, I think Calm, the app Calm, did like 200 million last year. Oh, did they really? It's ridiculous. What is Calm? I don't even know what that is. Um, so it's like an app you download and they ha and it just has like meditations and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and there's other apps like it. Um, ours is a little bit more like your daily dose of wisdom where, and we're still on the ground floor of it, building it up. We, we actually had, um, we launched it and we got over a thousand members mm -hmm. and we did really, really well. And then the Amazon servers crashed mm -hmm. and it corrupted. Cause like with the apps and stuff, a lot of them, most of them are based on the Amazon, like S3 and Amazon yeah, servers, AWS, all that. AWS. And so, um, there was this, this massive crash. It was like literally like a, a doomsday event and it, it just thousands of companies, their logistics departments, mm -hmm. apps, it just crushed them. It like fried mm. them, you know, like, like think about like, um, like the Terminator was that was a uh, Skynet, you know, mm -hmm. just push, right. And so of course we're like, 
a small company. We don't have like 20 developers sitting in a room, mm -hmm. you know, with Star Wars on, you know, coding and being plugged in. So it just, it, it hit us like crazy. So we had to, um, we had to like rebuild the whole app mm -hmm. from the ground up, which is what we're doing now. And we're, we're redoing it a little bit, but, but the reason I mentioned that is because like the app game, the software game is hard. Like I had mm -hmm. a software before yeah, and that was hard because it had to connect to all these other, um, all these other softwares. And if mm -hmm. they change something, then you got to change something in yours, Yeah, you know? And so it's, it's a very tough game. Mm -hmm. But if you think about it, um, there's a lot of apps out there that do like a hundred million, $200 million a year. Yeah. So to me, I'm thinking like, man, if my app can just do 10 million a year, mm -hmm. that would be amazing. Um, but our, our angle is like your daily dose of wisdom. So you, you get, um, maybe there's a quote or there's a piece of wisdom from anyone all the way from Aristotle to Steve Jobs that in history have talked about something, maybe something from books. Mm -hmm. And every day there's a five minute audio that sort of dives into that, explains it and how to apply it to your life. And you get that five minute audio every day mm -hmm. and it just helps you with your mindset and helps you become more successful. We have a ton of, um, like the people love it, but we did, we did have to put it on a separate app temporarily while we fix this one. It's been, I'm not gonna lie, it's been mm -hmm. a nightmare. I'm yeah. sure you've dealt with oh, software yeah. stuff, yeah. but we're, we're looking to, when we relaunch it, looking to be a lot better, so. Yeah, um, it's, it's different, it's so different, like, and you know, I know you've gotten into physical products, I've gotten into physical products. Um, it's different because, like, like, you and I are used to having an idea, getting a whiteboard out, drawing, like, turning, going on Facebook Live, and then selling the, selling it, and then there's money, and then like, fulfilling it is just going on like teaching a course, right? That's like the easiest thing. But then with software now, okay, I can sell this thing. I can do the sales. I can get all the sales, but now I'm dependent on all these other people and all these other companies and all this technology to actually make it work. Right. And right. you know, and, 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 uh, uh, fulfillment or, uh, uh, e-com is even worse. Dude, e-com is terrible. It's, it's terrible. Yeah. It's we're terrible. dealing with that right so, like, now. We, we had, um, that's been, oh, that, so we developed this planner that, you know, yeah. uh, uh, and people love the planner, the product's great. But like when we first had it, we had like 10,000 copies. Mm. They got stuck on a ship in California because there was something about China and the U S having whatever their issues are. And yeah. it was stuck there and it was stuck there for like a month and a half. Mm. And I was just like, this is insane. Like, yeah. and we're like, Brandon was like calling all these logistics companies and mm. just having to do all this cr cr crazy stuff. And Brandon, how, how much of a nightmare was dealing with that? Never put me in charge of a physical product company ever again. <laughs> Yeah, he said never put him in front of uh, in charge of a physical product company yeah. again, dude. It, it's it's horrible. It's and terrible. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why, like, I always say, um, when you teach, when you do consulting, or when you do information products, or you do events, mm -hmm. or you do like a mastermind, I mean, that money can be used to because it's it's easy money, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, million you make millions of dollars at like eighty percent margins, mm -hmm. or or even more sometimes. Yeah. And even if you're terrible at it, it's mm -hmm. still like 50% margins yeah. if you suck. And then you can take that and you can put it into investments. You can put it into real estate or cryptocurrency or building mm -hmm. a real company, as yeah. I put it, yeah. you know? <laughs> so it's an interesting, it's an interesting thing for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but I want, you know what I'd like to pick your brain on a little bit here mm -hmm. is the done for you. Um, so you, you do what at least, uh, you say you're at 2 million a month? Uh, we're at, well, let's see, we're at 13 million right now. So that's a little more than a million a month right now. Okay. So you're at, at least 600, 13 grand million a year. Yeah. So we're, yeah, we're, yeah, we're, we're at, at over 600 grand a month in done for you services. Uh, yeah. So we do a lot of, a lot of bundling, right? Because like we, we have found part of the, part of the coaching that we do, like what we found is that leads. So, so we work with lawyers, right? And we found that a lot of times lawyers think that leads are their problem. Same thing with a lot of business. They yeah. think that leads is the problem, yeah, right? They're the but, problem. <laughs> yeah, well, but, but so, okay, here's a great example. We had a client, we got him 300 leads in a single month and he got zero cases out of it because he didn't have his intake system handled. He didn't have a, he's not good at sales. You know, like there's all these different things that we can bring them the lead, right? But if they don't have their business and their infrastructure set up behind that, then they're not gonna get cases. And at the end of the day, they're still gonna look at it like it's our fault, right? Because, oh, I paid you all this money and I didn't get any, I didn't get any cases, right? So I read a, a long time ago, I read the book, Extreme Ownership. One of yep. the, it's, I think it's essential reading for just anyone in life. Absolutely. Um, and 
it's basically like, you know, I can complain that the, that the clients are not actually doing their part or I can figure out a way to fix it, you know? So one of the things we do is now every client that we have gets an answering service um, that, that is included in the cost of their, of their monthly fee. And now somebody answers the phone. So at least their calls aren't going to voicemail, right? But then we start doing coaching. Do you recall years ago when everybody was complaining about that? And I- Answering I, service? No, no, they oh. were complaining about clients not calling. So they would run mm -hmm. whatever, some, you know, paid media yeah, for, yeah. for clients. And they say, well, they don't answer the phone. They don't answer the phone. And yeah. I was like, why don't you just charge them more money yeah. and hire a VA to answer the phone? Everybody's like, no, that won't work. Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> so we do that. And actually, but here's and the thing, <laughs> but here's the thing is that not only that, but we also include it as part of the offer. We're like, not only that, but you get an answering service. So now you can fire your answering service that you pay $300 a year, a, a month for, right. and you can do that. So it makes our offer better, right? But we were realizing that they still don't know how to do sales. They still don't know how to run their business. So that's when we started saying, okay, so what we're gonna start doing is not only are we gonna do all this stuff for you, but what we're gonna do is we're also gonna teach you how to run the business. We're gonna teach you the marketing principles. We're gonna teach you the business strategies, teach you all that type of stuff. And at the end of the day, it, it's good because it allows us to, um, increase what we sell because now we can charge them for that but really it actually makes the done for you service more sticky because they're actually getting results because like i said i mean if you get 300 leads and you don't, don't get like we've done our part objectively we've done our part by getting them 300 leads they're still mad because they didn't get any clients out of it and ultimately they still blame us because um personal responsibility and we can have a whole other conversation about yeah. that <laughs> yeah or lack thereof yeah 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 well so i actually had a i saw a comment uh, in our client group recently where, uh, and you know, keep in mind, we teach people how to, you know, get clients. Mm -hmm. So, um, the, the, they were saying, you know, I just, I just, I don't, I just, I don't want to do sales calls and I, I don't want to hire people. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, then why are you here? Yeah. <laughs> like, what do you mean? That's like a fireman saying, oh, I, just, I, I don't want to go into a burning building. It's like, yeah. well, I get that, but and why are you a fireman, you yeah. know? And, and it's, it's, it would be, when people try to teach people how to start businesses, they, they don't mention this stuff, mm -hmm. right? They'll mention like, guess what? Your clients are gonna have expectations that are just insane. Mm -hmm. They're gonna be like, I want you to help me grow my law firm. I want you to help me grow my coaching business. I want you yeah. to help me grow my salon, but I don't wanna do any work. I don't wanna be a business owner. Mm -hmm. I don't wanna act like or behave like a business owner. Mm -hmm. I just want magic to happen and yeah. whatever. And it's just not realistic mm -hmm. and nobody talks about that. Mm -hmm. They just say, oh yeah, get clients and da, da, da. And so, you, you know, taking that responsibility to do that is huge because most other companies are not gonna do that. Most yeah. other people in your position, they're not gonna do that. They're just gonna bitch and moan about their clients. And mm -hmm. don't get me wrong, Oh, I, still, right. I still bitch man. They're, I still bitch about right. my clients, like, but at the end of the day, I still do something about right, it. Right, you know? exactly. Yeah. Okay, right, exactly. It does make you feel better to go. Yeah. You realize you're insane. Yeah, right? yeah. You're just insane. Yeah. But uh, so, so what do you do for the lawyers? Like, tell me mm -hmm. exactly. Like you, so a lawyer wants more cases. So you get mm -hmm. them leads, yeah. and then you help book those leads to what come into the office. No, we don't actually do. So what we do is we we're kind of a full service. So you can't just hire us just to do a website, right? Or just to do blogging or just do SEO. When you hire us, basically what happens is we take over all of your internet marketing. So we handle their, we, we completely build them a new website. We rewrite all the content. We do all the search engine optimization. We do their Google business, Google my business profile or Google, but they change the name all the time. I don't know what it's called now, but basically when someone searches personal injury lawyer, we make it so that they show up, right? And then we also do their pay-per-click advertising. We do their Facebook Facebook advertising and we do remarketing and retargeting and all that stuff. Um, and then we also do coaching. So I do, I have a weekly coaching call that I do every Wednesday where I'm teaching, you know, I'm teaching the marketing side of it. And then my partner does a call on Thursday. He does basically the business strategy, you know, how to hire, yeah. how to handle, you know, all that type of stuff, you know? Um, so it's the full package, but at the end of the day, that's what we're doing is we're essentially making their phone. How ring. many employees do you have? Uh, we're at 35 right now, 35 W2. Oh. Plus we've got it probably another 40 overseas. I'm not, okay. I'm not, I'm just, I'm not gonna, <sighs> <laughs> I, I can hear Brandon. I, uh, that makes me just, makes my skin crawl. Yeah. 32 employees. Oh, I just, cause you know, man, it's hard to manage employees. Oh, yeah. It's a, it's a hard thing. Yeah. You know, I, I personally, um, went so deep into like selling information and mm -hmm. teaching people that, you know, cause I've had the, the million 
dollar months and sometimes they're hard to maintain mm -hmm. you know because you do go up and down mm -hmm. right you, you definitely go up and down yeah um but you know i've always maintained a handful of staff uh i'm completely removed from the business mm -hmm. and it's i think it's but here's the here's the caveat right because here's the thing like like i do have a lot of people that ask me that they say dan how do you produce that much revenue you're basically not involved you have a handful of employees and everybody else because this is what I see. I see a lot of people out there doing other things. Mm -hmm. Like they're, they got like a boiler room where they're like calling leads, you know, if, if they'll, oh, and they'll make these massive, uh, marketing systems where they are selling tons of different products and then yeah. they're calling everybody to make pretty much the same revenue where mm -hmm. we're just like, nah, we just sell one thing, one coaching program. Here you go. Boom. Yeah. And, and you just watch a video and if you want to book a call, you book it's simple. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but at the same time, there's a caveat to that because your company is sellable. Mm -hmm. You know, your company is yeah. acquirable. Yeah. Um, when you're the personal brand, even if you're not involved, even if you're not doing the coaching anymore, you have a team, mm -hmm. it's difficult to, to sell that company. Mm -hmm. You know, if you own an e-com company, we, I mean- Nobody knows who the, the owner is. Nobody, nobody knows who the <laughs> yeah. owner is. And when you sell it, you get this insane multiple, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, or a supplement company, mm -hmm. you get this insane multiple. So that's why I've always viewed a coaching company as like, hey, I'm gonna make a bunch of cash. Yeah. I'm not gonna be able to sell it, but my life's gonna be super simple and mm -hmm. I'm gonna be able to invest that into something else. That's how I've always yeah. lived it. But what you're doing, I think I think it's awesome that you're doing this much revenue from Done For You because dude, if you ever wanted to sell that, mm -hmm. you can sell Done For You. Yeah. I mean, that's like. Yeah, and that's and that's why we're that's why we pivoted because that's, that's this isn't how I've always done it. I started as the basically the flat fee, you know, we're going to do this coaching program. It's $25,000. You just wire us the money. And then we do the work and we do the coaching, but we never have anything else to sell them. And then I started looking at it. And like you said, I, I, I was at this point where we got so big. I mean, you know, look, 4 million isn't that big in the grand scheme of some businesses. But for me at the size I was at, it wasn't worth it for me to continue pushing harder to get to 5 million or 6 million because of the added like I, what I, I was having to do so much work in actually running the business rather than doing the stuff that I want to do, which is the marketing and right. the creative stuff and the offers and presentations and everything. And I was finding that all, all day long I was doing the CEO you stuff. You still want to do that though? Yeah, I love doing that. See, I don't want to do anything. I just want oh, to really? sit in my condo and read philosophy books and I mean, I like, you know what it is really though? I like, I like reading, I like marketing and then I'll, I'll read something and I'm like, oh man, that's like, like I've been, you know, cause I've been getting into Dan Kennedy stuff, like Dan yeah. Kennedy and Jay Abraham stuff, like crazy lately. I thought about doing the the day with him where you go out. Is he still doing that? Uh, he is, and I uh, I think I'm gonna do it. Is he doing? I didn't know he's doing that. Yeah, he's doing it. I think it's like 18 grand, and you spend like six 18 hours. 18 grand? Yeah, I don't care. I mean, no, I'm saying that's nothing. I'd, oh, I know. Yeah, yeah. No, I'd yeah. do that in a second. Yeah, it's like 18 grand, and you spend like six hours with him. And Damn, he, dude! I, I didn't he, even know that. And he probably just tells you how stupid you are. For probably, six, yeah. But that's no. fine. We need that. You yeah. Know, no. like, <laughs> like, so then, some, uh, uh, I don't even I, know what we we're talking about. I'm blown away because I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I was actually <laughs> hanging out with um, Jason Capital in Puerto Rico. We were at the gym, uh -huh. and um, he was telling me about he did the 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 castle day with Dan Pena or okay. whatever. And he like, he also doing a castle. Is that? What well, like? I don't, I, I don't. You know who Dan Pena yeah, is, yeah. right? Like, you see his stuff, mm -hmm. and you're like this guy's insane. Right. Mm -hmm. And he's just like, so insulting and all that. But mm -hmm. like everybody that I know that's gone and done whatever the day is with yeah. him, they come back and they make like a billion dollars or something like, yeah. and I'm like, all right, something's going well, on at that castle. There's something, <laughs> you know? there's something to be said about going somewhere and having somebody having an outside fresh set of eyes, look at your stuff. Like yeah. look, I, I, you, you and I, like, you remember the pivotal point in my business is when you had me switch from uh, low ticket to high ticket. Yeah, like, right. you remember what what happened? You were the first person, yeah, that I actually, because that that's like a big thing. Like, people don't charge enough, and mm -hmm. I was trying to like, because I I started charging more, and it was working out really well. And I was trying to take all the clients, you included, and I was mm -hmm. like, you guys need to raise your prices. And you were one of the first that actually listened to me. Yeah, but but <laughs> see, that's the thing is that if if you notice, there's a theme here is that I always listen to you. I know you did. So you know? <laughs> so here's the funny part, right? Here's the and I'm not. Oh, this is gonna make me sound so pretentious, but you literally did every single thing I ever said, mm -hmm. and you grew the fastest of anyone. You yeah. know, and and then like people started going, oh, maybe there's a thing there. And don't get me wrong, people have paid me a lot of money, mm -hmm. and I'm not saying I know everything. I'm not saying I'm always right because mm -hmm. I'm not. 
but I've been doing this so long and I've heard so many, I've been on so many coaching calls because I, I know I removed myself mm -hmm. from the business, but I was more involved for longer than most people. Yeah. The, you know, most of people that have those similar businesses that are mm -hmm. up there, you know, they, they get out way sooner. And I, I didn't, I stayed in for a while. So I just had that opportunity to speak with so many people so many times that mm -hmm. I was just like, I haven't heard anything new in a long time. Like yeah. you give me a problem and then I teach my staff. I'm like, all right, if somebody gives you this problem, this is what you tell them because mm -hmm. the, this is not their unique. The people think that yeah. they think, oh, I have this unique problem and I need unique help. No, you don't. It's you don't have stuff. a unique yeah. problem. You, it's all no, the same. you don't. You, <laughs> it, it's the same problem that a thousand other people have yeah. and you're making the same mistake that a thousand other people have. Mm -hmm. And that's that. And that's just the reality of it. And that's, that's not my opinion. Mm -hmm. that's just what I've seen because we've have thousands and thousands and thousands of clients yeah. and is, you, you know, well, you even, know? even deeper than that though. I mean like marketing is marketing. Like I, have you ever read, um, a customer is born, oh wait, is a customer is born every second by, uh, it's by Joey Vitale, but it's about, uh, PT Barnum. Have you ever read that book? No, but I, it's now amazing. It's on my list. And what's cool about that, because PT Barnum lived like, I don't know, he ran that, that museum back in like the 1840s. Right. And what it is, is the entire book is talking about the, 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 the factors that led to his success, they call them like the rings of, it was like his rings of greatness or something. I can't remember what it's called. It's the same crap that we do today. It's exactly the same. You know what I mean? The only difference is, is that it's, it's like the strategy versus the tactic. The strategy is exactly the same, you know, give more value, show what the benefit is to them. I mean, it's, it's all the same, you know? And the difference is, is that now we use Facebook ads and Instagram. And back then he used like the newspaper and like the town crier or whatever it is. You know what I mean? Like, right. but using scarcity, using urgency, using like, he had that thing where it was like the, the mermaid. Have you ever heard about the, the, the mermaid that he had on display at his, at his, uh, at his um, uh, museum. He had this like Ripley's Believe It or Not Museum. That's how actually how he got so rich. And um, it was just all curiosity. That's all it was, was just triggering curiosity in people. And it's the same crap we do today, you know? So that's the thing is that not even have you seen it thousands, thousands of times, but it hasn't changed for 200 years, you know? Yeah. Like marketing is marketing, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And um, I can't remember where I was going with that. I had something else to say about that, but go ahead. <laughs> well, let, me, let me ask you a question. So you went, so a million dollars a year, then you get to 4 million a year. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, and then uh, <laughs> you're at, you're at 13 now, but, but you, because million a month, mm -hmm. but you, you mentioned earlier that you expected 24. Yeah. So what, where are we, how are we getting from 13 to 24? Well, okay. So basically what happened in that period where we went from 4 million to, you know, we, uh, I'm actually, my current company is merging with another company. Okay. So my company does, did 4 million last year. This other company we're merging with did 4.8 million last year. So last year, I also joined Myron Golden's mastermind, who you're also in. Myron's awesome. And Myron teaches how to have a million dollar day and how to make money from live events, right? So I did a live event in when was it? It was May and we made $1,041,000 mm -hmm. on that live event. It was, and by live, I mean, you beat Zoom me event. by 11,000. Yeah, I know. But I did, what, what did I do? One, one million. So the, the, the student becomes no. the student <laughs> becomes the teacher. No, it was, it was, <laughs> but I didn't have to sell done for you. <laughs> oh, that's true. That's true. Yeah. That's, that's a good point. But, um, so then, then, then what happened was, and, and the, the, my partner now, um, we've been working together for a year now cause he's also in the legal industry and he has like complimentary services to, to me. So like I do websites, SEO, Facebook ads, he does pay-per-click advertising on right. Google. So it's, we're not competing with that. Um, and then also I teach more of the marketing strategies and like creativity stuff. And he teaches more like how to, uh, handle, how to hire people, how to acquire other law firms. Like all it's, it's like left brain, right brain type of stuff. You know what I mean? Where I'm bringing the creative side and he's bringing more of the structure and all that type of stuff. And actually the logistics and everything. So it's a really good team. So we've been friends for a while. We worked together. We've had a lot of success together, like, and it was all on a handshake deal. Right. right. Um, so, but we've been trying to figure out how do we work together? And I had this problem where I just didn't want to be the CEO anymore because my company was getting to the point, which I think you experienced also at some point where it was getting so big that I had to be the CEO more than I could be the marketing person. And I couldn't be creative, right? I couldn't do what I actually wanted to do. And I couldn't do what I was actually good at. Um, so, what happened was we teamed up and we decided, okay, we're going to merge our companies. We finally figured it out, came together on the terms and all that stuff. We did one event in November 
And on that event, we did we we made over two million dollars in annual reoccurring revenue. And then we did another event in December. Uh, we had uh, we had Jordan Belfort on there. I know you're on his podcast. We had um, Damon John from Shark Tank on there, and we did over two million dollars and added reoccurring revenue. So we basically added another company worth of revenue just from these two events. So our plan when this you say year two million in recurring revenue. You mean yearly or monthly? Uh, uh, yearly, mean, annual. Yeah, yearly, yeah, annual, yeah, annual. yeah. Annual. yeah. So. When you look at what our companies were doing, it was four million plus four point eight, so that's eight point eight. Plus we added another four million, you know, or, yeah, plus another two million. Another and what two was million. the service? Just your normal agency. Yeah, it's stuff? it's uh, is done for you website SEO, pay per click, Facebook ads, plus um, uh, his coaching and my coaching. So it's a seventy two thousand seventy two thousand dollar a year service that we that we're selling. Uh, which nice. is, and you know what's funny is that it's easier to sell. When, the the, the one know. thing I've learned, <laughs> I know, every time I know. you raise the price, the easier it gets to sell. Dude, do it's you crazy. know how insanely difficult it is for people to wrap their brain around that? Yeah, it's nuts. I mean, and the and the margin for error is so much less. It is, you know, because you're 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 taking. That's the thing is people say, oh well, I, I can't figure out how my stuff can be worth that much or whatever. It's mm -hmm. like. But think about this, right? If you just sold somebody a video, if you gave somebody a video and you said, do this thing, mm -hmm. but if you said, hey, we'll do it for you, or hey, we'll walk you through it, or hey, you can talk to us once or twice or three times a week mm -hmm. or whatever. Now, it, it's not that you're necessarily changing what you sell, but you're changing the probability that they'll be successful. Mm -hmm. And I always say, you know, if you took uh, 10 of your clients, your, your ideal clients mm -hmm. and they're on a beach and they come across a genie lamp and they rub the genie lamp the genie pops out and the genie is a capitalist mm -hmm. and he's like listen i'm only giving away one wish today mm -hmm. and i'm only giving it to one of you and i'm going to start a bidding war right everybody bids on the most they would pay to get that wish what and, and that wish is the solution that your company solves what would the highest bid be? Mm -hmm. People always come up with a number that's far more. That's a really good analogy. Yeah, I like thank that. you. That's <laughs> far more than what they charge. Yeah. Now, you say so. Number one, that shows you that they're not charging enough mm -hmm. because if you if you don't believe in yourself and if and it, like how can you expect your customer to think you're worth this if you don't think you're worth exactly this, right? Yeah. But at the same time, what is the difference there? The difference is certainty. Mm -hmm. The genie is a genie. So you're certain they can solve your problem. Yeah. So think about this. The more certain a client is that you can solve their problem, the more they're willing to pay. Mm -hmm. You don't have to add a bunch of crazy stuff or you don't have to like do more. You just have to change things to where they're more certain that they'll get the result and yeah. they'll pay more. Exactly. It's like, I have this analogy and I don't know where I heard this from, but it's like, it's like, say you take a stack of $10,000, right? $100 bills in a stack of $10,000 and you put it inside of a paper bag and you say to someone, how much would you pay for this bag? Right? And they'd be like, I, I don't know, you know? And then you take it out and you put it in a Ziploc bag. You say, how much would you pay for this bag? You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's the same thing. It's allowing them to see the actual value. Like right. what, what Myron says that uh, wealth, cre wealth, is the, wealth is the result of value, cl value clearly conveyed. You know what I mean? When you actually can show how much your stuff is worth, you know? And that's a big part of it. I think another really big thing that helps guys like you and I is that we actually give so much away for free that we, we, you know, it's definitely easier when you do the work and you actually create content and you, the, I, my favorite quote from Frank Kern is prove you can help people by actually helping them, you know, just right. create all that goodwill. And then you become part of the offer. You say, Oh yeah, not only that, but you get to talk to me three times a week or not three times a week. It'd be insane. You get to talk to me, you know, once a week or once a month or whatever it is. And that makes that offer so much more valuable also, right. you know, it's just, and that's something, I think that's something that's, that's so valuable that people miss is that everybody has a camera in their pocket and upload videos to YouTube. And that makes your offer 10 times more valuable. And it also makes you able to charge more and not even think about it. You know, it's just, there's so many, there's so many little nuances to it, but back to the back to the the price you know i've tried selling stuff at six dollars at 49 dollars at 19.97 at 24.95 and every single time i raise the price it's easier to sell and you get better buyers at that price that's the, that's really actually even if it was the same difficulty to sell i'll take the buyers that pay a higher price anyway because you know uh it, it's just so much easier you did that raise your prices challenge and um you know, it's, 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 it's so much easier to sell high ticket than it is to sell low ticket, you know? Yeah. yeah and, and it is harder 
to convince somebody that they can raise their prices mm -hmm. than for them to actually raise them and yeah. actually get it. Yeah, <laughs> it is, it is, I mean, and everybody thinks that, oh, nope, I'm special. That won't mm -hmm. work for me. Um, I, I have a client, it's my favorite client to, to mention. Mm -hmm. uh, his name is Vaughn. He charges, I believe it's $6,000 for his offer. And he's, you know, super happy. I mean, he, he told me one time, he's like, I just sit around and drink Hennessy and smoke cigars and <laughs> I make tons of money. And they, you know, this is insane. He used to charge like, I think like $47 or something. You mm -hmm. know what he sells? Mm -hmm. How to play authentic gospel piano. Oh, really? And he charges $6,000. Wow. Right? And, and the thing is, it's like, if you said to me, like, I'm a guitar player, mm -hmm. right? Now, you can sit here all day long and, and create limiting beliefs and say, well, you, you musicians are broke, blah, 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 blah. Mm. Yeah, they're broke because they spend money on music. Yeah, yeah. Okay. They're but, broke, but they got a Mesa Boogie amplifier right? and they got <laughs> yeah. a $3,000 Les Paul. Right, and, exactly. You know. <laughs> now, if I sat down and I said to myself, I want to be like an amazing guitar player. I want to be able to play guitar like Joe Satriani or, or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. And you said, okay, you're gonna pay $9 a month for this app and you're gonna log into this app and it's gonna teach you to play guitar. Or you're gonna pay three or four or even $5,000 for this program here. And this program that you're gonna go through, that you're gonna talk to people, whatever, this has actually produced this many people or th that have done this or th th like, and I was certain mm -hmm. that I would get to become in a certain amount of time, that high level guitar player, even if that didn't make me any money, even if I just knew that at any point I could pick up a guitar and be like a God yeah. on guitar, I would rather pay the 5,000 and know I'd get the result than pay the $9 for something that I don't have any idea if I'm gonna get the result and I'll probably never log into anyway. Yeah, yeah, no, it's Because it only costs correct. me $9. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Have you have you read Alex Hermosi's new book? I um, have. Oh, it's so good. Yeah. But He's got a formula in there that breaks down the value of an offer better than anything I've ever heard before. So uh, it's, okay, so basically you have to picture an equation. So it's dream outcome times the, pro, or the, the prob, probably, yeah, probability of achievement, right? Divided by uh, time delay times the effort and sacrifice that actually, that you need to achieve it, and that's value. Right. So I don't know if that's, I don't know if that's clear or not how I just explained that. It might be kind of confusing. I, re I but remember it in the book. I got to go back and it, it's, it's it basically the there's four factors that determine what you can charge. It's what is the dream outcome? So first of all, is it a diff like, are, like if you're doing dating, right? Are you trying to find someone, their soulmate, or are you just trying to get them a date? Right. And then the pro the, the likelihood of actually achieving the dream outcome. So do you have five, fa you know, you say, I'm going to find you your soulmate. You're gonna get married, you're gonna have all these kids, you're gonna be so happy. Um, and not only that, I've got all the social proof where I've done this 5,000 times yeah. for people. Or right? ma imagine if you said like, let, let's just say you, you got, you're working with guys that, that wanna, um, re they really, really suck at talking to women. Like yeah. they, they just melt down, right? Mm -hmm. Or whatever. Yeah. And you say, all right, let's say it costs 10,000, let's say it costs $10,000, mm -hmm. but you're gonna come to an event. Maybe there's an event once every six months or once every three months, or maybe it's just one event, mm -hmm. right? Like, like you'll see, maybe you get a course, you get some coaching, whatever, or even if it's just a, a three day event or a five day event, I mean, you could charge 10 grand for a three to five day event. It doesn't have to be a course, you know, and you go there and you learn all this stuff and they take you out to restaurants, the bars, and they yeah. work with you. Yeah. Right. And they say, all right, you're going to go up and talk to that girl. And then you, and they work, dude, you're going to get, you're going to come out of that experience mm -hmm. literally a thousand times more likely to be able to talk to women and and whatever mm -hmm. than if you bought a course for a thousand dollars or 500 bucks and went through the videos mm -hmm. like so the thing is is like how do you increase the likelihood that they're going to succeed and to bring it back to done for you mm -hmm. because that's i mean if you're doing it for them that's yeah. Yeah. That's like so so let me ask you this when you when you work with a, a lawyer right cuz i, I want to pick your brain on some best practices for done for you yeah since we're not just talking about coaching mm -hmm. um what's the average client pay you per year uh so it used to be forty two thousand. now we've gotten it up to seventy two thousand. all right so seventy two thousand dollars company wide our average monthly our average client pays us 3100 a month average okay so 3100 a month all yeah. right so for something that's what are some of the things you've learned because my, my biggest thing with done for you is that there's, you could say, oh, well, you're gonna pay me X and I'm gonna do this job mm -hmm. and that's it, right? Yeah. Well, 
what a lot of people forget is there's a lot of other stuff that goes into that. Like, is the client happy communicating with the client, the mm -hmm. client, not getting you the materials that you need to actually fulfill. Yeah. There's all these like little logistic things that pop in that make it so much more difficult than just, Oh, I'm going to sell you this thing. Right. Mm -hmm. Whereas with coaching, or information-based products, none of that exists. Mm -hmm. They log in, they attend the coaching calls, they watch the videos. It's on them. It's that's, it's that's on the them, thing, yeah. Right. So, what are some things that you've learned from creating a not just a successful done for you mm -hmm. and how to sell it, but like how to actually manage that so that you're not pulling your hair out? Well, the most important thing to remember is that they're paying you for a result. They're not paying you, and I have to, you know, I have to talk to my staff about this, and my staff is fantastic, right? But this was something that, you know, it, it really took a little while to get this through through to them, is that they're not paying us to build them a website. They're not paying us to do their SEO or run pay-per-click ads or anything. That's not what they're paying us for. They're paying us to bring them clients. Or they're paying us so that they will get clients, right, at the end of the day. So we can do a great job. We can build the best website out there, and we can do the best SEO and all that type of stuff, but they're still not getting clients for some reason, then ultimately they're going to blame us and we're gonna get fired, right? So the biggest thing that I've learned is that the more ownership that you can take over the entire process from A to Z of them getting clients, um, you know, so we can bring them the lead, right? Like uh, up to up to us getting getting them the lead, you know, we deliver the lead to them either, you know, we make it so that someone finds them in Google and then picks up the phone and calls them. But then after that, it was cut off. It was basically like, well, okay, you're on your own and hopefully you get clients, you know? So what we figured out is that one of the most important things is figuring out how do we take matters into our own, own hands where it's kind of like after the lead calls, how can we make sure it's getting handled? So that's why we give them like free sales training. So I've done a ton of sales training. Um, a lot of stuff I learned from you actually, and I apply it to law firms. So I give them sales training. We give them um, uh, access to our funding resources. We tell them even the correct way to use PayPal funding or PayPal, um, what's called PayPal credit. You know, we teach mm -hmm. them different things about that so they can actually, so that if clients don't say they don't have money, now we can solve that problem. We can help them make it more likely they're gonna get a, get a client. Um, so the biggest thing that I've learned is that every single step that you can take out of the client's hands makes it more likely that you're going to retain the client. Because the reality is that when you're looking at valuation of a business, if you have a lot of done for you clients, but your churn rate is massive, like every year you lose all your clients, then your company's not worth anything. Where it's worth money is where you keep clients year after year after year, right? And the only way you're going to keep clients is if you're actually getting them results. So our average client sticks with us for uh, 3.9 years. And that includes wow. people that have not been with us for 3.9 years, right? So we've got clients like the very first client that ever hired us, he hired us in 2012. He's still a client, you know, so that's almost 10 years. Um, so, you know, our clients stick with us because we really focus on understanding that they need to get the result. And then what I've realized is that the more work that we put, the more we work we can take off of them and put on us, um, that's when they get the better results. So I've also done done with you programs. And that was that was a, a coaching program that I did for a long time. And what it was, was we sold them the coaching program, it initially, it's actually the thing that you you helped me raise the price on. I did it for $5,000 and they got a weekly coaching call with me and then they also uh, got access to the course. But the biggest objection we always had in our sales call is this sounds great. I just don't want to set it all up. It sounds, it's a lot of work right. to set up. So I was like, okay, well, we'll charge them extra 10 grand. We'll charge $15,000. And then we eventually went to 25,000 right. um, and we'll just set it up for them, right? But the problem was, what happened was they looked at it as a done for you program. They didn't look at it as they done with you. So what they stopped doing is they stopped coming on the coaching calls. They stopped going through the course and then we turn it over to them and it's like we built them this Lamborghini, but they don't know how to drive a car. You know what I mean? So, and then, they, and then they're mad at us and then, you know, they're mad at us and they're leaving us bad feedback because they didn't get the result. Right? So once again, that's what I'm saying. When, when you have so many, when, when you have, when you can do everything you can to take it out of their hands and put it on your shoulders, that's when you get the better results. Because look, at the end of the day, and we got some fantastic results, but at the end of the day, there's a human nature where people want to put in the least amount of effort possible. Not everyone, some people do, right? And they also want to blame everyone but themselves. So it, it's like it, it's like going to the gym and hiring a personal trainer and eating like crap and only attending a quarter of your workouts and then being mad at the personal trainer that you don't have a six pack. It's, it's insane to me anyway, but some people don't see it that way, you know? So 
that's the biggest thing that I've learned is that if you're doing a done for you service, the, the most valuable thing you can do is keep the clients renewing year after year after year. And the only way you can do that is to remember that they only hired you for one thing that's to get a result, right? They didn't hire for a website or whatever. So the way that you're more likely to get a result is the more that you take on the more ownership that you take, even if it's not your problem, you know what I mean? Even it's like, Oh, the client's just letting their calls go to voicemail or uh, clients not getting me approval on the website or they're not getting me the assets that I need or whatever. Like you've got to figure out a way like, you hire a VA to call them every single day and say, Hey, you got those pictures? Hey, you got that video you're doing? You know, like, like make sure it happens. Cause at the end of the day, it's going to hurt the client, but it's also going to hurt you because they're going to fire you, you right. know? And that's the biggest thing with done for you is, is it's keeping the clients and keeping them happy. I remember back way early when I used to teach agency owners mm -hmm. and I always used to say, don't even ask your clients to get you pictures or just go on their Facebook profiles yeah. and pages and just grab them. Yeah. Screw it. Exactly. <laughs> you, know, like, yeah. you know, exactly. Just do it yourself, you know, yeah. it'll, you'll, it'll, you'll, and you'll be happier also because you won't be pulling your hair out, you know? Yeah. So, so the, the, the overall like idea I heard from that is that if you make, if you identify a result and let, let me see if I can download this into one thing, mm -hmm. if you can find people that are reachable, meaning you can mark, you can find them, right? Mm -hmm. You can identify them and you can, you can find them. And they own a business that has a high return. So when a lawyer gets a case, it's probably worth a lot of money. When a um, yeah, million sometimes, you know, right? So right, exactly. So they can get a high result. Like when you get them a client, it's worth a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and you can take over pretty much the entire aspect because if you take over the entire process of mm -hmm. them getting clients or of, of whatever the process is, then you have ultimate control and you don't have to deal with a lot of the logistics of working with them because yeah. that's the hardest thing to do is they, they are hiring you because they don't know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So if you have to work with them, you're working with someone that doesn't know what they're doing. Yeah. It's never a good experience. So if you do all of it, mm -hmm. you don't have to deal with that. Is that sort of the overall yeah. kind of idea? A absolutely. And also you don't have to deal with egos and stuff because like, so we, we will not like, like when, like when a client comes in, if they say, Oh no, I want to keep my website and I want my IT guy to manage my website. We say, that's cool, but we're not the company for you because right. inevitably stick to your, stick to your guns. Exactly. Yeah. Because we, I, I know ultimately we're not going to get the best result because sometimes there's things that we need to do and we need to, you know, there's just, we need control so that we can do the things that we need to do. Right. I understand like websites, um, you know, we do WordPress and everything and there's PHP, but every website is, is if you go through different websites, it's different languages. They're written different ways. They have different, uh, uh, you know, designers in the back end and everything. So what we need to do is we know that we use, we, we know how we, uh, we know like the builders that we use and all that type of stuff. So we just, we, we have very, very strict things because I understand that every single time we've made this exception, it's burnt us because, and what ends up happening is we don't get the result for the client. So I would rather not take a client's money than take a client's money, knowing that we're, we're basically starting with our hand tied behind our back, you know? And, um, the other thing that, that drives me crazy, this might be a controversial opinion, but whenever we work with a marketing manager from, from a law firm, it's, and especially one that has like a master's in <laughs> advertising or, um, you know, how, you know, how I know that you don't know how to do advertising huh. if you have a master's. Yeah, in advertising. Well, that's the thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm like, you know, cause cause yeah. Cause they're like, Oh, you got to focus on branding and all that type of stuff. I'm like, no, just, just, no, just do didn't. what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> like, I mean, like, it's like, I, and, and I don't have, I mean, I have a, I have a degree in criminal justice, right? So I don't have a marketing degree, but I've spent more than a college at worth education. I've, I've spent more than what I, w I spent on my college education, working with people like you and like my, and with Myron and like, you know, just all these people who have actually done things in the real world and understand marketing. Right. And because college is not the real world. No, it's college not. is this theoretical metaverse of ideas that yeah. don't work. Exactly. I mean, unless you're a, <laughs> like a lawyer or a doctor, that aside, when it comes to actual business yeah. or things like that, I would say that, um, you know, college would be the place you would go if you really wanted to be bad at it. Yeah. You know, because the world has moved on. You got to think in college, and I'll hammer on this for a second. Mm -hmm. How long does it take to update concepts and to, it takes decades mm -hmm. and then it has to get approved and by yeah. the time it's been updated it's already changed mm -hmm. the world has evolved actual marketers actual salespeople, actual business owners actual entrepreneurs they're evolving the game at a f pace that is 10 20 30 40 50 times 
what college can keep up with, with, oh, yeah. with, you know, and the other thing is, I hate to say this, but what, what does a college professor make? Like 50 grand a year, 80 grand a year, mm, maybe a hundred, if maybe they're 100. 10, or 10, if it's a good, if it's a, if it's a prestigious school, maybe 120. Okay. Maybe. So you're going to take business advice from somebody that makes 120 grand a year. Exactly. <laughs> Well, number one, don't take advice from broke people. <laughs> right. Yeah. Don't take advice. Uh, it, college professors and your parents. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Top two. Yeah. You know, um, let me ask you this. What are you going to tell your son uh, about college? If he, if he says, I want to go to college, what, what, what's, cause people ask me this all the time and uh, I, I've got my own opinion on this, but what, what are you going to tell him? So I'm, I'm going to tell him the same thing I would tell anybody. What is your goal? What is, what is the output? What is the end result? If you say to me, if he says to me, well, I want to save people's lives by being a brain surgeon, I'll be like, all right, what college you want to go to? I'll write a check. Mm. But if he says, I want to be an entrepreneur, or if he says, I, whatever, if he says, I want to be an entrepreneur, I'll say, son, listen, I, the last place Take you need that to, money and start a business. The last place you need to be is college, <laughs> yeah. right? Because here's the other thing, and I, I don't want to say this, I do want to say this, but I don't want to say this, but college, or just at least the American educational system has turned into really an indoctrination process to turn to, to, to spread these radical ideas and turn people into turn society into something that it really shouldn't be, mm. you know, like some of the stuff, not all the stuff, but some of the stuff they teach in college and just in school is so radical. It's so insane and it's getting more insane that, I just don't want my kid to be a part of it. Mm. You know, like my kid does not need that type of toxic stuff. Like there, again, I'm not saying everything, but dude, I've seen some stuff that is just absolutely insane mm -hmm. what they're teaching. And the thing is, is the world, you know, the world moves on from, from traditional education. You know, it, it has, I mean, look, dude, look, look at all the people who have created uh, programs and, and things for for people that teaches them how to do something because they've actually done it. Mm -hmm. They didn't learn it. My father said he my father was in broadcasting for 30 years. Mm -hmm. He's won like seven Addy Awards. He's helped break uh, uh, the Allman Brothers records. He, you know, he's he's really like has a lot of accolades in broadcasting. And mm -hmm. I'll never forget what he said to me. He said, when I got out of college, uh, he, he went to school for broadcasting. He said, when I got out of college and I started working in broadcasting, I learned one thing. Mm. And that is that I didn't learn anything in college, yeah. right? Everything I learned about yeah. broadcasting, I learned in broadcasting. And I said, well, did you learn anything like that helped you? He's like, not really. Yeah. <laughs> you know, well, you know, it's funny. So I, I graduated because I was originally going to be a lawyer and it's completely coincidental that I actually work with lawyers right now. Like one yeah. thing has nothing I mean, to do with the other. I mean, if you're going to be a lawyer, you got to go to college. Yeah, yeah, yeah I was going to be a lawyer. <laughs> but so what's funny is that I graduated from law school, or no, graduated law. I graduated from UCF and I, uh, my first job, what do you think my first job was? You? Yeah. Um, Immediately out of college for the first like eight months. Wow. Well, okay. Now, now, now I feel like pressured to get this right. All right I'll just tell you. Uh, oh, no, oh, you, you were, um, you were a, you were a salesperson. I was a line cook because I couldn't oh. find a job. See, I was going to go for that, but I thought that was too <laughs> obvious. I know. I couldn't find yeah. a job. And you know how I found a job is that and it's funny because like even back then I didn't realize what I, I was I was I've been a go getter my entire life. One day I got sick of it, so I was trying to find a job at a, at a law firm. So I printed out a stack of resumes and I got in my car and I put on a freaking suit and tie and everything and I went into every single law firm. I was like, hey, I'm trying to find a job. Here's my resume. Here's my and that's how I got a job. You know what I mean? Um, and I mean that's something that very few people would even do, but that's how I got my first job working at a private law firm. And, um, you know, I worked, I worked at the U S attorney's office. I worked at the private law firm. I got fired from every job that I had because I'm a terrible employee, but that also taught me that I didn't want to go to law school. And that's actually a very, very valuable lesson that I'm going to tell my kids is that, look, if you want to be a doctor, if you want to be a lawyer, if you want to be like an accountant or something, or like a CPA, you have to have, you have to have the degree. Right. But, go work in the field that you think you're going to go into instead of, you know, investing $250,000, uh, you know, getting, coming out in debt, coming out in debt, 250 K or whatever it is. And, and probably not even enjoying what you're doing, you know? And the thing is, is that nowadays, like I do not need a degree for anything that I do right now. I spend a lot of money on, on coaches and everything like that, but I'm actually learning from people that are actually doing the things, you know, <laughs> like, let, 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 think about that. Like, you, you, you got, you got in my mastermind years ago when it was, this is when it was in your, it was it only was, like 30 grand or something. It was 30 grand. And not only that, so per year, yeah, the 30 grand was, was, 
whatever. But the best part is it was in your living room with, it was like yeah. the original one was, <laughs> yeah, it, was it was, it was, uh, it was Gina, Arnie Giske and uh, like J.R. Rivas. And it was the, like the four of us, that was it. And like, I mean, that, those were the good old days where like you uh, would just yeah. basically like yell at us until our, you were basically gave us the, the Dan Kennedy treatment um, where, you know, we go home with our tails behind it, between our legs and then go and make a million dollars, you know? <laughs> so you know what's like, funny is, is that always worked. Yeah. You know, and. Oh, it's fantastic. I would, dude, I, if, if you offered something like that again, like that's, that's, that's it was, it was awesome. Those are, those I, are my I th favorite. I thought about doing this. Um, Remember when I used to shoot people with yeah the, uh, Nerf, guns. the Nerf guns yeah. and stuff? Like if you had a stupid idea during mm -hmm. the event, yeah. I you know, and then I got all like, because the whole world changed. Everybody mm -hmm. got all sensitive. Everybody got all like, oh my God. Yeah, dude, like it got so sensitive that like religions started changing their views mm -hmm. on things that for thousands of years they didn't change it on. Yeah. I was like, you guys are that scared? Yeah. You know, and I just, that's why I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm out. Like, I don't need, I don't need this crap no more. Like, yeah. you know, but, um, uh, if I ever do it again, man, I probably would just be super blunt. Cause yeah. I, I can't, oh, this world is just too sensitive these days. Yeah. But you know what? The thing is, is that at the end of the day, we got results. You know what I mean? Like right. that's, that's the thing is that like, I think that what you miss out when, when, when you're censoring things like, when you're censoring yourself, then you can't say what you really think. And sometimes you just need to say, stop being an idiot and do this thing, you know, where instead you have to say, well, that's a really good idea, but maybe you should, and maybe that's not you anyway, but like, you know, but I if you do that, no, but I'm saying, but if you're censoring yourself or if you're even changing the, the approach, like, I, I don't know. I mean, do you remember it's the like, time, um, do you remember the time? I forget who it was, but they, they, they had this really good, like their business was doing great. Mm -hmm. Everything was great. And, um, they said, uh, hey, Dan, I'm thinking about doing something else instead. I'm mm -hmm. like, why? What, what are you talking about? And they're like, well, and they gave me this idea. And it was just like this horrible, horrible right. idea. And I was like, here's what I'd like you to do. Yeah. I'd like you to take that idea. I'd like you, you to take it out back. <laughs> no, no, but I, I said, I'd like you to take it out back. And I'd like you to ask it, like, what's its favorite meal? Mm. Like, what? What, what is it like to, what is his favorite meal? And then I want you to prepare that meal. I want you to do a really good job, you know, really make it, I want you to serve that meal to this idea. Mm -hmm. Let them enjoy it. And then I want you to shoot it in the head. Right. <laughs> okay. Execute it right yeah. there in your backyard. And, and the guy was like, <laughs> but I was like, I tell you this not to shock. I do tell it to you, shock you. Yeah. Because I would rather you be, leave here and, and need like trauma therapy then go and do that idea. And then your mortgage company calls you mm -hmm. and says, we have to possess your house because you did this stupid idea and you're broke. Yeah. You know, to me, that's, you know, so I've I always think, just I think that. at that point, that's when you're actually being a coach and like, it's not always telling everybody what they want to hear. Oh, not know? anymore. Like, not anymore. Well, you got to sugarcoat everything. Everything's all, yeah. all, you know, Vanilla well, and you know, what's funny is that I got that. I mean, I, I don't know that I ever got that. I don't know. I don't know that I ever came up with ideas that bad because I stayed. I stayed pretty you did. focused. You, you did. But you did. No, no, no. But no, no, you didn't come up with that. But you did. You stayed focused. Yeah. You didn't get. I never had to really yell. At I you. definitely can't. Well, no, no, no. I definitely got distracted. What my problem was, I, I would get distracted yeah. with stupid things that I shouldn't be doing. You, you know what I mean? That, like, though. yeah. I mean, well. Oh, hey, wait, how did the one thing go? The, the, can we talk about that? The the pills. Yeah. We talk about. Oh yeah. No, it's great. We sold. Yeah. The, so, so you hold on. Hold on. Dude, so you had, you started this company for, wasn't it like hemorrhoid pills? Yeah. So a buddy of mine called me and he's like, um, I've been friends with this guy for like 15 years. He's like, uh, there's something you don't know about me. Um, I've had hemorrhoids for the last 15 years and I finally got over them. I'm like, okay. Congratulations, <laughs> Mazel Tov. You know, like, yeah. and he's like, he's like, the way I did is I, I invented a cure for hemorrhoids, and I was like, what? So I, I he's like, he's like, I want, I want you to help me sell them. Um, so I started doing some research, and I started realize I, I did some research, and I saw that there's nothing out there that cures hemorrhoids, um, and the market, like, like 70% of people in their lifetime will get hemorrhoids. 50% over the age of 50 have them. Like women who've had babies have them. Like it's nuts, right? Wow. So I was like, this is an insane market. I've never and there's had no a hemorrhoid. Cure for it. I, I, it doesn't yeah, sound luck, pleasant. Luckily though. I haven't either. <laughs> um, but it's funny because we actually have some celebrities that have ordered our stuff. I can't say who it is, but like we look at, I look at the thing, I'm like, Hmm, interesting. That's who has hemorrhoids. <laughs> like, oh my gosh, <laughs> dude. But, um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I can't say who it is, but, um, 
so he contacts me and he's like, um, you know, do you want to help me sell these things? And I was like, and I started looking at it and I was like, this is like an, an insane opportunity. Like I have to jump on this. So, um, I was like, before we do this and here's the funny part is that everything that you taught me about marketing, and this goes back to the PT Barnum thing, everything you taught me about marketing is literally the exact same strategy that we're using to market hemorrhoid pills, right? Everything I learned about coaching, I applied to the hemorrhoid business and it works, you know? I mean, like there's, I mean, there's some nuances that are different, like, you know, uh, like we have to deal with shipping and fulfillment and all right. that type of stuff. Are you still but doing that? Yeah, yeah. How's it going? We did uh, $300,000 in sales last year. And um, we just got distribution. Hopefully, fingers crossed, we're going to get into public soon. Um, like we are, we were already, we're already in contact with Publix. We're in yeah. GNC. I'm just gonna I'm gonna save you here. Yeah. And just say that um, you're not claiming that those pills cure hemorrhoids because you probably can't say that. Yeah, we're I'm not just, claiming that. We're just chatting that you had a phone call where someone said that. I have, I have I had a phone call. <laughs> where, <laughs> had a dream. <laughs> um, had a dream where he basically he had hemorrhoids. He took this concoction he no longer has hemorrhoids. Yeah. So let's put it that right, way. Right. And, and then I, I know, I know they work, but you know how yeah, you know, no, I, I know God forbid saying, the yeah. government let you actually create something that works. Yeah. They yeah, like things yeah. that don't work. Well, here's the thing. It's four <laughs> ingredients. It's 100% natural. Um, you know, so it's, I mean, it's literally just like, like two of the ingredients are, are from the, um, uh, an extract from, uh, orange peels, you know? And like, so yeah. it's, it's 100% natural and it's insane because like, the people that are taking it, like I've, my biggest thing that I've been doing is I've been getting video testimonials from people. So I'm actually interviewing people and talking specifically about their hemorrhoids. And like, hey, would you like to come on and talk about well, how you we got rid of your You know what's crazy though, is that people are like, we talk in marketing, find the pain point, right? Like right. people in pain. These people are <laughs> literally in pain. Like you hear some of these people like, I, I can't, I couldn't walk my dogs. I couldn't sit down. I couldn't do, I couldn't work out in the yard or anything like that, you know? And like, like the, the, the best success story that we have actually, no, we have so many success stories. One lady, she's, she's like, I've had, I've had him since my son was born. And like, I've been in extreme pain since my son was born. I'm like, how old is your son? He's 34. He, she took him four days completely gone. So, you know, you know, what I, mean? you know like, I kind of hate you right now because you realize how many emails and comments we're going to get asking about these pills and where to buy them. Oh yeah, lots of <laughs> lots of friends. Yeah, yeah, like, uh, yeah, yeah, my uh, mom. Yeah, uh, my buddy has them, yeah. yeah. But yeah. It's funny, whenever I tell people about it, they're always like, it, it's, it, well, you, you, I learned lots of my friends have hemorrhoids, and I also learned that lots of them have friends who have hemorrhoids, who uh, maybe, the, you yeah. know, so. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, yeah. Um, <laughs> but, but it's actually, it's cool because, um, I mean, there's a massive opportunity. I mean, you can imagine like, like what, what something like this could sell once we actually- Do you do funny ads? Please tell me you do funny ads. Yeah, you've seen our ads. Yeah, our yeah. ads are funny. Yeah. yeah, you sent me a couple well, early my, on. My, my buddy, he's he's a stand-up comedian. So we used to- The one the one that made the pills? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. So he has no problem being on camera. He's like the face of hemorrhoids, right? So that's like, yeah. So we have like all these like funny videos and everything. And um, he's he's creating, you know, all kinds of influencer content and all that type of stuff, all about how to get rid of hemorrhoids, what to eat, what exercise to do, all that type of stuff, you know? And- um, you know, it's the type of thing where we can make a lot of money on it, but it's actually cool because we're actually like literally helping people. Like it's it's crazy, yeah. um, it's crazy the the stories that I'm hearing from people about how they they were just debilitated and they get rid of these things and now they're like they have their life back. You know, so have you got any cool. like? Has anybody like? Because one thing I know about the supplement industry mm -hmm. is that as soon as or or really even any drug industry, as soon mm -hmm. as you have something that works, everybody, especially the government, wants to take that away from you yeah. and stop you from selling it so they can sell something that doesn't work uh, 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 current situation of the world. Uh, right. But, um, and so, you know, uh, because they want the big pharmaceutical companies yeah. who, who create stuff that, you know, we, we haven't are terrible. Is there any wood around here? Some wood right here. Oh yeah. Here, take this one. I'm just not, no, I said wood. I'm knocking oh, wood. on wood right oh, now. Knocking on wood. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is wood. I'm not extremely superstitious, but I also am superstitious enough to know that I don't want to not knock on wood. Um, so luckily we haven't had any issues yet. Um, we ha we did hire a, we hired a pharmaceutical law firm to review all of our claims and do right. all that type of stuff. And that was an absolute nightmare and you know, all that stuff, but I, they're I, like, you can't say anything at all. That's good. Well, you know, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So they're going to, you know, they're going to go 
to the extreme caution side, right? right? So we can't make any, I mean, the product is called Hem Healer, right? And they're like, you can't have oh. Healer in the name. Like, so we were like, well, we kind of already have Healer in the name and we've got, we've got 25,000 bottles. So you, you're not gonna get us on that one, you know? But, um, you know, but we have all the FDA statements and all that type of stuff and it's a supplement, you know? So like supplements are kind of their own, their own thing, you know? Um, but how hard was that to like put that all together and, you know, make it and produce it? Well, it's so, we actually, the first batch we made literally in my partner's kitchen. And because, because I was like, look, this sounds like some breaking bad. <laughs> kind of. Yeah. He's in Los Angeles. We'll you, he's, uh, he's living in Skid Row. What, you know, what is it? Hem, uh, it's called Hem Healer. No, 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 oh. no. The, the, the guy from Breaking Bad, the bald guy, what was his name? Oh, Hemingway. Hemingway. Yeah. Yeah. Was it Hemingway? No, 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 no. no. What was it? I don't was know. It, it was, uh, Henderson. What? Walter, Walter White, but it was... No, no, but yeah, Walter White was his real name. Henderson? What was it? It wasn't Henderson. It was... What his, was it? It's going to drive me crazy the, now. The, the drug dealer's name was... It what? was... Um, oh, I know it. I, I'm drawing a oh, blank. The oh. show was so good. This is where Brandon should, like, Google it. Yeah, Google it. Because <laughs> it's going gonna, it's gonna to drive like me crazy. It's Hemingway or something. No, it's not Hemingway, though. Yeah, it's like... Um, yeah. Ah, oh, this is going to kill me. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, no, no. But basically, like... No, because here's the thing. Like, I wanted to... We needed what a, is it? Heisenberg. 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 That's it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Heisenberg. Yeah, yeah. There's probably so many people watching this and listening to this like right yelling now. Yelling at the. Yeah, it's Heisenberg. <laughs> exactly. You idiots. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, no, but like, you know, it's like every, like, it's it's like everything we're doing. Like, what's the minimum viable product here? Like, because I mean, before I start investing in all this stuff, I want to see if it actually works, right? So he put together, he ordered all the ingredients. He put together. You can buy like a a thing that makes pills for you, and we 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 put it together. And we went on Craigslist and eBay and just started selling bottles for $10. And the reason that we did it for $10 is because we didn't want to just give them away because we knew people wouldn't take them seriously if we just gave them away. You know what I mean? Right. So basically we went there and we started selling it for 10 bucks and it was basically like 10 bucks. And, but the deal is you have to give us a testimonial if it works. Um, and one by one, we started getting testimonials like crazy. Wow. So then I had the confidence like, all right, how are you going to add a zero to real? What do you mean? You made 300 grand last year with it. How are you going to add, how are you going to make 3 million? Um, so we're adding in a lot more avenues like last. So actually a big part of it is testimonials. So, I mean, you know, businesses are built on social proof. That's how my entire business was. So I'm literally just interviewing people and getting video testimonials. Um, we've got it on Amazon now, which is a whole thing. We've got it on walmart.com. Yeah, don't get me started about Amazon. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. They're, they're withholding lots and lots of money from us right now because Dude, Amazon, no reason, you know, like every time I try to do business with Amazon in yeah. any way, shape or form, even in their servers. Yeah. Okay. It doesn't matter if I'm selling something on Amazon planners. If I'm, if I'm, uh, uh, doing an app that requires it, they always seem to screw me. <laughs> like yeah, yeah. It's, it's just our, our, our return rate on Amazon is 50% less than the industry average. And they're still withholding just like, I mean, a massive amount of sales from us. Um, and they didn't even tell us they were going to do it, you know? So like, so, so, so do you, is, is, is most of your money from Amazon or is from pay traffic? No, no, we've got a funnel. Um, so we, we, no, it's all paid. So we do a lot of paid traffic. We do Amazon ads. Um, we're starting a lot of influencer stuff though. So we're actually, we're about to launch a TikTok campaign. So we're doing TikTok stuff. Um, we're going to start doing TikTok ads. Um, we've got, I mean, we're, we're just that, advertising that everywhere. Good. Yeah. There's no one, there's no one doing it. That's the thing. Like I could, I could just see you holding up like some grapes, you know, yeah. <laughs> and being like, listen, you know, <laughs> you know. Well, well, you know, you know what it is. It's that the only other, okay. So you have two options, right? You can get some preparation age and you can stick your finger out and you can go and spread and then you shove it up your ass or you can take two pills. What do you, what would you like to do? I mean, um, the, the application that, sells itself, the, you know, yeah, that's, <laughs> like, that, that's, that's, that should be an ad. Yeah, exactly. You know? And we did do that. I think you saw that one where it's like, here's the old way. We didn't want to add. It was like, here's the old way to take uh, hemorrhoid medicine. And like, like you know, um, but, uh, <laughs> but the, the other difference is, is that, uh, um, I wonder how many people with hemorrhoids right now are like, this isn't funny. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's not. Well, look, I never, I, I'm, I'm fortunate enough that I've never had it. Right. I uh, me too. Um, so now I feel like an asshole. Cause we're like talking about this and well, we've but, never, but here's the thing. I've talked, experienced I've that talked to enough people to know how much it sucks. So if somebody has uh you're right there. You're, yeah. Sorry, my, <laughs> my back. Yeah. No, yeah. it's a it's chair. These, these chairs actually kind of hurt my lower back. This also. is the same chairs that Joe Rogan uses. Oh, is it at, really? Yeah. For his, podcast guests. Oh, interesting. Um, yeah, they're like, dude, they're like a thousand dollars a piece. It's ridiculous. Oh, really? But it, it, it keeps your back straight, mm. but like, 
I think at first you got to get used to it. So for me, it's fine. Mm -hmm. But for, I guess, the guests, you have to get, every guest has to get used to it a yeah, bit. Yeah. But um, you can sit in it like 17 different ways or oh, something okay. like it's that. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, so, you know, but it's, it's I don't know, it's kind of cool. Yeah, but, yeah, uh, but um, I don't remember what we were talking about, hemorrhoids, pills. Yeah, but, but I mean, like, the reality is is that, you know, it, it's, it's, it's something where people are in literal pain and actually helps, you know, yeah. and it's... Um, it's the type of thing I know it's going to do well. We're just at the pay, we're at the we're at the the growing phase right now, and I think this year is going to be a huge year for us. Just because last year we did that, and we really didn't have a lot of social proof. You know, we had right. you know it takes some time. exactly. It just yeah. takes time because how many people you know? I mean, we sold. I think we have twenty five hundred customers right now, and it's like how many of them are willing to get on camera or even leave a review talking about it? Because it's embarrassing. You know, what I mean, mm -hmm. nobody talks about it. That's you know, it's it is like, it's hard because it's it's yeah it's yeah that would I'm trying to think of all the issues or diseases or whatever you yeah. could have and that's got to be top well, three the, the reality is embarrassing but 70 percent of people are going to have it in their lifetime 50 percent of people now over I'm the nervous age of 50 because 70 percent yeah. that's a lot well now okay I'm, but here's the thing we need that, to stop talking about <laughs> <laughs> i'll tell you what i've learned about it it's all about your diet right well it's not all but a lot of it is controlled by your diet so you drink you drink a gallon of water a day still uh, so, yeah, sometimes a gallon and a half. Like, like the instructions are when you're taking Hem Healer, you're supposed to, you know, you need to eat very well, stop eating sugar, stop eating processed food, eat lots of, you know, vegetables and like, you know, broccoli and stuff with like lots of fiber, take walks, um, drink lots of water. Like that alone will help a lot. Just just even if you don't take Hem Healer. Hem Healer is, it, what it does is it reduces inflammation because that's all a hemorrhoid is. And this is a great, uh, I'm sure all your, all your, uh, your, your listeners are loving the hemorrhoid talk on, on this podcast but that's all it is it's an inflamed blood vessel so if you clean up your diet and you reduce inflammation then it goes away it's just that's just what it is right so um you're probably not going to get it if you eat clean Dude, and you drink I lots eat of water so clean yeah. I, I do the apple cider vinegar in the morning yeah i drink so funny with the I, I just uh, had to do a sample. They give you a jug. You have to pee in a jug for a day mm -hmm. to test your hormones, you know, because I like I work out. I'm just trying to get my hormones yeah. tested. And apparently you're like the jugs like this big uh -huh. and you're only supposed to fill it up like that much. Yeah. I, I did not did know like overflow people, it. people oh, <laughs> dude, I filled the whole thing up and I didn't have any more room because I drink so much water. Bring an extra so, one of these. So I, also. I, I take it to the facility or whatever and the guy's like you weren't supposed to fill the whole thing up this is for one day i'm like yeah that's three quarters of a day yeah, yeah. he's like what do you mean i'm like that's three quarters of a day like yeah. i drink a gallon gallon and a half water a day and he's like you did you peed this much in a day i'm like i peed this much to like eight until four o'clock yeah in the like yeah. like and the guy was just and, and i was he's like i'm just shocked and i'm like i'm just shocked at how little water you drink yeah, yeah. You know? let like, me ask you a question do you so Okay, because I drink about a gallon of water a day, also. And are you like up peeing every every twenty minutes, like I am? Like it's that's so, the worst part about it. So for me, kinda yeah, but mm. for me, I drink ha at least half a gallon is in my workout. Okay. So like when I'm at the gym, and I'm drinking, because mm -hmm. I take the gallon with me, half of it goes in my workout. Or if I do jujitsu, at least half of it mm -hmm. is there. So what happens is you're sweating. So you actually expel a very large portion. I only pee a couple times at the gym mm. because I'm sweating that out. I think a couple times at the gym is a lot though. <laughs> well, I'm there for like two hours. Oh yeah? Yeah. Okay. Or, and, I, and I'm at jujitsu for hour and a half, two hours okay. total. Yeah. Stretching and all that. Um, so that's over a period of several hours. Okay. Yeah, but yeah. but um, you sweat most of it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, no, I yes, I. Well, yeah. so okay, so what's interesting? I haven't tried this yet, but I'm I'm interested to try it. So I have I have a freaking coach for everything in my life. I have a nutrition coach, right? And basically, every morning I have a guy. So every day, whenever I eat, I log it all in this app. And then at eight o'clock in the morning, this guy calls me and he's like, so uh, let's talk about those French fries you ate yesterday, you know? And this That's is like, awesome. this is the accountability that I have. And actually, I don't know if you've noticed, like I've lost about probably 40 pounds since the last time you saw you me. You do, you look great. And yeah, and it's it's because of that accountability because I hire coaches for every aspect in my life, right? But one of the things he said is that, he's like, if you drink all that water, do uh, get a, um, a sea salt grinder and do a twist of sea salt in your water and you won't have to, you won't have to go as often. Uh, I've heard something about that, but I'm yeah. not sure I want to, 
I don't, I don't know. know I, was trying. I don't mind peeing, but uh, <laughs> for um, me, it's annoying because I'm always in like call, in meetings yeah. and everything, and I gotta go up and go. Uh, yeah, I don't really do meetings. Yeah, I, I do Voxer. I'm just like blah 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 blah, and then I yeah. let my. I'm working on getting out of the meetings, but it hasn't hasn't happened yet. Yeah, I'm a I'm a Voxer dude, so I can actually yeah. be peeing and Vox. There you but, go. You know? Perfect. I think I've seen you do that actually in the <laughs> bathroom. <right> <laughs> <laughs> but uh, um, you know, you know one thing that annoys me though. You mentioned that like you said you said you had a coach that comes up. And like, oh, let's talk about these French fries. Mm. The thing that gets me is that people, friends, whatever, you know, I hate the, oh, one, you'll, one will be fine. One will be fine. No, it won't. Mm -hmm. No, it won't. Yeah. Okay. Because it's, it's the whole mindset of, oh, just one will be fine. Because, oh, if, 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 if just one is fine today, then it's fine tomorrow, then it's mm -hmm. fine the next day. And if you have a goal, like if you're not trying to lose weight, if you're not trying to get in shape, or not even losing weight, just any other aspect of life, if you're not trying to win a, let's say you're a fighter and you're trying to, or you're, you're training for a tournament in jiu-jitsu or whatever it is, mm -hmm. like the thing is, is that like the people that get the reward are the people that never, they're the people that don't, buy into the one is just fine mm -hmm. and they have the discipline you know i always get annoyed by people that do that mm -hmm. they try to make you feel bad for sticking to your goals yeah, and yeah it's like you shouldn't make me feel bad for sticking to my goals because what you're really doing is projecting the fact that you don't have any discipline yeah you want me to join you in eating these french fries where you know because you suck and you want exactly. me to suck too That's, well and, so you have I, no discipline and, you I, want and me I, I don't know i don't know how you are like i'm not so like I used like I've done like the keto diet. I've done all these like restrict like like these insane diets where it's basically like everything's cut out and they never work. So what actually is working for me now is that I do indulge every once in a while, but I don't do it most of the time. You know what I mean? So like it's like I would say ninety five percent of my meals are good, but like it's like you said, just one. I can't have just if there's a plate of French fries, I can't have just one. I either right. have to have none or I have to have half yeah. the plate. You know what I mean? Like well, that might be a limiting belief, but. So for me, I just count the calories. Yeah. I, I, that's the thing. Like everybody has these stupid diets. Like I remember like, I, and I've known this for a while, but I remember Alex Harmozy did a video on it. He's like, if, if you get, if you hit your protein and you get X amount of calories, mm -hmm. you, that's it. Like he, I remember he was roasting like every diet out there. Cause at the end mm -hmm. of the day, if you expend this many calories yeah. and you take in this many calories, calories in calories, out, that's yeah. it. It doesn't matter what diet you're on. And every, I, I don't know I'm gonna get heat for this. Cause every, oh, well, <laughs> dizzy, 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 dizzy. no, dude, like it doesn't matter. Like you, you, you yeah. count the calories, the calories are at the where they need to be. You lose weight or you gain weight. End of story. Yeah. That's it. Right. Like, I mean, and that's what I've heard everybody. I mean, you've seen Alex, mm -hmm. the dude's huge. And I, he was, he was talking about, um, being at these, these entrepreneurial events where all these entrepreneurs are like, I'm on keto and I'm on this and I'm on that. Mm -hmm. and, and, and they're all like, they all have dad bots, right? They're mm -hmm. all like, n they all look like crap yeah but this dude is like just enormous and ripped and mm -hmm. he's eating twizzlers and, and stuff and they're like what do you do and he's like i just count my calories i can mm -hmm. eat twizzlers today because it's within my calories y'all do your stupid stuff right yeah, yeah and and the guy's jacked so i just i think it's funny how people um over complicate things in order to avoid the heart they don't want to count calories yeah, yeah. well then you know what? Maybe you don't deserve to lose weight. Sorry. You know, I think that it's also about sustainability. At least for me, it is. It's sustainability. Is that like, you know, like every, it's like, it's like marketing. Everything works if you do it, if you do right. it right. It's just how, how sustainable is it? But so it, see, that's the thing is it's know, not like, that hard. Like yeah. I have somebody that, so when well, I, sustaining like keto is hard. Like that, that's, well, you, that's cause that's ridiculous. Yeah. But I mean, I, I mean, I, so I, I did mean, it. I lost yeah. all this weight and then I got sick of bacon. You know, it's like, well, how do you get sick? It's well, like, I'm, if you're sick of bacon, then there's a problem. I'm you know? saying ca <laughs> like understanding how many calories is not hard. Like, like yeah. so what I do is I have meals prepped, right? So mm -hmm. I'll have whatever, six ounces of chicken, a cup of rice and, and, and a cup of vegetables. And I'll have that four times, uh, or I'll have that three times a day in two shakes. Mm -hmm. I eat the same thing every day. Yeah. I grab the meal, I put it in the fridge, boom, whatever. If I go out to dinner, then I just, on that one day, I, you know, I kind of look at it. I look mm -hmm. at the menu in my head and I calculate it in my head. It just yeah. doesn't have to be super close, but it's not really that hard. No. And after a you while know, you just start getting a feel for what's how many calories are in certain things and you can kind of estimate it, you know? Right, right. But you're still, yeah. you're still counting, you know, you're yeah. still doing it. And it's just, 
it's not that hard. People talk about sustainability. They say, well, this isn't sustainable because it's so hard. No, you, you're saying it's hard and therefore you're making it hard. Mm -hmm. It's not that hard. And that goes with anything, yeah. you know? Well, I don't, I don't even count calories. I just, it's basically for me, it's just all about understanding what's a, what's, it's just understanding like, like, you know, like making good choices about what I'm eating. Yeah. Well, you, know? you probably are hit, but that's what I'm saying. You I'm, getting counting, this, I'm getting the same effect. You're getting the same effect. I'm you're, just not, if you're, I'm not having to count it. Yeah. But you're probably within the range that if you did count it, mm. you'd be oh, where, I'm sure, where you yeah. need to be. It's have, you know? have a salad, have a salad. Like, like I had, a, I had a burger for lunch today, uh, but instead of French fries, I had a side salad with it. You know, it's like making sacrifices like that and all adds up. And yeah. you know, I mean, I'm not, I'm not as, I'm not where I want to be yet, but I mean, I'm yeah. down 40 well, pounds. I do, and, I do you know. the counting of the calories and all that. Cause I'm, I lift weights and I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. trying to like bulk. And, and so for that, it's, it's crucial. I mean, if you're just trying to lose weight and that's it, and you're not trying to like mm -hmm. do like performance stuff, then I would say that it's less crucial. But like you say, yeah. you're, you're having the burger and then you're having a salad, mm -hmm. you know? I don't know why we're talking about <laughs> weight loss. But hemorrhoids and then weight loss. Hemorrhoids and then weight loss, <laughs> you know? But um, well, let me ask you about this. What, what's the biggest thing that you hate about um, dealing with employees? Drama. 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 That that's the that's the biggest thing I hate because I'm a very non dramatic person. Do like, you have drama with with employees sometimes. I get some employees. I mean, look, when you've got twenty employees, personalities are going to clash. You know what I mean? I you know I must be like super fortunate. It's not okay. It's not. I don't have a ton of drama. It's not like it's not like my life is overrun with drama with employees. There's just a little bit of it. But that little bit of it, I hate drama so much that that's what I hate about that's what I hate about dealing with employees the most. Um, but um, it's, 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 you know, it's, it's not the end of the world. We, we, we've, we've got it worked out. But the other thing that I, I don't like about, um, employee or not that I don't like about employees, well, it's, it's a challenge. challenge. It's a yeah, challenge. challenge. Yeah, it's yeah. the wrong word. Um, is, um, I try to hire managers, not employees. Right. And what mm. I mean by that is I tell people, I want you to come to me with a solution, not a problem. Right. Mm. And I want you to be able to work autonomously because I don't, I'm like the anti micromanager. Like, I don't care when you work. I don't care what, I, I don't care how you do it. I just want you to just do the thing you're supposed to do. I'm like, Bill Belichick, do your job. And we don't have to even talk. You know what I mean? So See, I'm the opposite of you. Oh really? Yeah. So I, my employees generally don't have any drama. Like mm. I can't remember the last time. And again, if, my, if any of my employees are listening to this, it's not a lot of drama. It's just, it's if there's any drama, a problem doing a podcast, <laughs> uh, like a, like a wide open, but I mean, I don't ever, I don't remember like my employees ever having an issue with each other. And yeah. I'm fortunate for that, but I also yeah. have way less employees than you. Mm. Um, that said, I, I do tend to micromanage because I consider what we do as an art. Mm -hmm. I mean, you might as well, but like, I consider it an art almost like painting. Mm -hmm. And so it, and I'm a, I'm a musician. I went to school for music. Yeah. Like I, I get a little bit passionate about what we do and that it's done correctly, not so much from a business perspective, but from an artistic perspective, which is probably mm -hmm. a flaw. Yeah. And that's why when I hired my general manager, I was like, listen, I'm just going to scream and yell at you. Mm -hmm. And then you translate it to something nice for them. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's a joke kind of, but, um, <laughs> but you know, because like, I really am passionate that we do things correctly. We do mm -hmm. things well because I've never really looked at it. I have enough money, right? Like I don't need, I'm financially to the point where I just, I don't even, money doesn't even, I don't care. You know, mm. um, I'm not trying to put people on Mars. I'm not trying to make $50 million a year. I just want to like live my life and be chill, you mm. know, very Florida vibe, mm. you know, you, I'm sure you can understand that. Yeah, you yeah. Know? Um, I mean, I was born here. So like, I, I'm like, yeah, I'm good. You know, mm. I got, I'm good, you know, uh, but that said, the, the aspect of it, of doing it well and making it really good and, and the same thing with clients as well. You know, if a client mm -hmm. comes to me and says, well, this isn't working and yeah. I look at what they did, I'm like, well, it's cause you're not putting any friggin' effort into it. Mm -hmm. You're, you're not, or I don't want to do sales calls. Well, then why are you here? Yeah. Well, I, I saw this ad that said that I could, I could sign up all these clients without doing sales calls. It's like, mm -hmm. Dude, like, why, why are you here? Why are you here? Yeah. Why do you want a business? You know, you don't want to hire people. You don't want to do sales calls. You don't want to, what can you do? Mm -hmm. What can you do? You know, like go, go, go be an artist and travel and, and, and paint in the Sahara desert or something. I don't know. Like, you, you know, my favorite quote that you ever said, and this is, you oh probably, boy. you probably remember this. My no, favorite. I never remember my quotes. Okay. Uh, you said being a successful entrepreneur is about not being a whiny little bitch. 
That sounds like something but I But it's would true. Say. That's what it is. Yeah. It's it's doing it's doing the crap you don't want to do. Yeah. To be like, fair though, know, like, we're, we are all I still whine. Oh, I do too. You know, and so I'm not saying that I'm not trying to I complain, to be, you know, but then I do it. You know what I mean? Like yeah, that, it makes I think feel that's better the, too. I think that's the difference. So <laughs> like, yeah, I'm going to complain about this and then I'll just do it. You know what I mean? So like but the other thing like sales calls, for example. I used to hate sales calls. I used to like dread sales calls, but so then hire somebody. There's well, a solution, you know. No, or get better at sales calls because like right. look, if you're getting on sales calls and you're closing five thousand dollars and five thousand dollars or ten thousand you're not going to dislike them you love it it's like oh i can't wait to and that's what and and not only that it's like it's all mindset too you know that's if there's one thing i've learned about sales it's that the most important part about being a good salesperson is believing that they're going to buy you know like and, and and that's why like i'm so good at sales like and i've said this you know if you get me on the phone with 10 people eight of them are going to buy Right. And the reason why is because I've got this unshakable belief that when I get on the phone, this person is going to give me their credit card at the end of this. It doesn't matter how much it doesn't matter what I don't even look at their application. I don't care what their application says. I know that I can help them. And I know that they I know that it's going to happen. You know, and like I, I talk to my wife, I'm like, instead of saying, hey, I got to I got to do a sales call. I'd be like, yeah, I got to go, go collect some money real quick. You know, nice. like and that's, yeah. that's just, but but it's it's true. And I close like 80 percent of my sales calls on. I mean, you know, $42,000 a year contract and I do one call close and I close like 80% of it. Right. And the reason why part of it is the celebrity effect maybe, but the other part is I have this unshakable belief that it's going to happen. Right. You know, and I love sales calls cause it's fun cause I'm good at it. Well, the you other know? thing is like, you also know that you don't need them. Yeah, so exactly. You don't close the call. Yeah. Who cares? And a sale, sometimes sales reps are like, I need to make this sale. Yeah. And that vibe transfers. Um, and, and, and when you, when you don't need to make the sale, that's when you make the sale. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah. Cause p they can feel that you don't need them. They need you. Yeah. And, um, but like, it's, it's sort of like golf, right? I, I, I've been asked to go golfing with like a ton of clients and ton mm -hmm. of people. And I, I always say no, because I suck at golf. Mm -hmm. So like, I don't like to golf because I suck at golf. Yeah, exactly. And, and so it's like. Now, if I dedicated myself to getting better at golf, I would probably love to go golfing. Yeah, exactly. You know, <laughs> so it's like, if you're a business owner, there are certain things that you got to do to grow that business. Otherwise, don't be a business. You don't have to be a business owner. Nobody's mm -hmm. ask, Nobody is asking you to be a business owner, yeah. right? Nobody is telling you to do that. Mm -hmm. You're electing to do that. So if you've decided to declare yourself one, then you do the things that business owners do. And that means hiring people. That means sales. You yeah. know, that means... And, if you get good at it, you will love it. Exactly. Yeah. I That's mean, nobody's it. coming to save you, you know? It's yeah. Like, and nobody cares. Yeah. Nobody you know, cares nobody at all. Cares. Yeah. Oh God. If I could just tell, I see so many people, so many people, well, I just want to make passive income. Well, guess what? Then be an investor. Yeah. So does everybody. Yeah. I just want to make all this money and not do any work. Well, you know, I, I would love that. If you can figure out how to do that, then I will pay you lots of money. But so far, right. everyone that's promised that is, uh, I've never seen it actually well, work this out. This is the know? biggest thing about passive income that people don't realize. Passive income is not for business owners. Passive income is not for entrepreneurs. If you expect to make passive income from a business, then you are living in a fairy tale world. Mm -hmm. Passive income is for investors. That is the entire point of investing. Mm -hmm. You invest money, you get a much less return, mm -hmm. right? If I invest $100,000 into a business, I'm gonna like, 10 X that. Mm -hmm. But if I invest a hundred thousand dollars in real estate, I'm going to get like 15 or 10%. Yeah. Or, or if, if the stars align 20%, mm -hmm. why am I getting, why am I, why am I getting less? It's because I'm willing to, it's because it's passive, right? Mm -hmm. If I invest into a fund or stock and I make 6%, mm -hmm. I don't have to run that company. Yeah. The stock is You don't do anything. You sit on the beach and they uh, they make you money. Right. But that's much. why you're getting 6% <laughs> instead of 600%. Yeah, exactly. It, they're getting 600% because they're running the business. You get six or 10 or whatever mm. because you don't do anything. Mm -hmm. So if you want passive income, be an investor and stop lying to yourself. Stop lying to the rest of the world. Stop proclaiming yourself an entrepreneur and go be an investor. Mm -hmm. Oh, but wait a minute. You don't have any money. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Well, maybe then if you do want to get some money, you should be in a business owner and you should act like one. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what? The best investors also have business experience too. You know what I mean? Cause they yeah. understand they, they can identify a bit. They can identify those key aspects that a business needs to be successful. And you can't get that without running a business. I, I knew a guy who went to college and majored in entrepreneurship. 
That is the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my entire life. Like, take that hundred yeah, thousand dollars and is open dumb. a business. You'll get the equivalent of like ten MBAs. You know, like, why would you do that? You that, know, that is dumb because, and uh, entrepreneurship is such a a, a, a thing that it, it it cannot it can be taught, but it cannot be taught in it has to be taught by entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. right? You can't create this academic world uh because what is an entrepreneur it's somebody and, and let me let me let me jam on this for a second with you right because mm -hmm. you I, I i'd love to hear your thoughts on this why do so many entrepreneurs also tear down and destroy what they've created mm -hmm. and why do entrepreneurs need people like managers to be the buffer it's because when you decide that you are going to completely and utterly remove the safety net, like a circus performer that's doing something super dangerous and, and they just take down the net. You gotta be crazy to mm -hmm. do that. You're literally saying, I have absolutely no recourse. I have no safety net. If I make a bad decision, this is all gone. This is my entire financial safety and my employees' financial safety. Yeah. If I make good or bad decisions, I'm taking in a massive amount of risk, massive amount of risk. and. In order to do that, you have to be nuts and you have to be crazy. Mm -hmm. And the same type of crazy that that would take on that much risk is also on the other side of that coin, the same type of crazy that would tear it all down, mm -hmm. you know? And that's why entrepreneurs are emotional and they are sometimes self-sabotaging because that the, the 180 degree other side of that type of crazy is a destroyer. It, it, Creators are also destroyers. And so that's why it's very important as an entrepreneur, I think, to bring people in that aren't crazy mm -hmm. to help buffer your crazy. And yeah. that's employees. Well, you know what else? The other, the other challenge is, is we get bored, you know? Yeah, <laughs> like, well, and that's part of being crazy, <laughs> yeah. you know? I mean, it's, the other thing is, thing that gets me is these people who say, um, they, well, they make too much money, right? You know? Entrepreneurs make too much money? Or, or, or see, well, not maybe, maybe, maybe CEOs is a different thing, but like tax the rich type thing. Like, well, that plus just like, I've, I've seen stuff where they say, you know, you should pay your employees more, right. Mm -hmm. Or whatever, or you should overpay your employees. The thing is, is that a good entrepreneur realizes that storms come. Mm -hmm. So if you overpay your employees and you delete or you, 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 uh, uh, sacrifice your reserves. What happens when a major storm comes? Like and then you have to fire everybody. You got to fire everybody, <laughs> yeah. and then they lose their jobs. Yeah. Right. The thing is, you don't you don't underpay people, mm -hmm. but if you if you grossly overpay people, then you're not making a smart business decision because if a storm comes, now everybody loses their job. Yeah. And so people don't realize that why does the entrepreneur, why does the business owner make the most? Well, it's because they. It's not that they do in the most work. Well. That's the other thing, right? Steve Jobs, like I've heard this argument about Steve Jobs. Oh, well, Steve Jobs didn't build any computers. He had, he had, he had all of his people do it. He never made a computer in his life. Why did he make so much money? Da, 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 da. Or, you know, Facebook and da, 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 da. He, the thing is, is that it's not, it's not that they make the most money because they did the most work. It's because they took on the most risk. Mm -hmm. Risk is everything. Oh, yeah. You take on that much risk, you deserve the greatest reward. Yeah. Risk is everything. It takes a lot of balls to take on that much risk, you know, not just mm -hmm. financially, but like to save face, to yeah. your reputation, all that. Yeah. Yeah. We, we you did. Know? So we, we did that event, uh, in, in December, we made over $2 million. We spent $150,000 up front to do that. That's more than most people make in a year. Yeah. And you know, like we had to, we had Jordan Belfort on there. We had to pay him. We had Damon John on there. We had to pay him. We had to run Facebook ads. We had to do, you know, all this stuff without any guarantee whatsoever that we were going to make, make a, a single penny, penny on the back. You know what I mean? And $150,000. I mean, that's, but you'll get somebody on Facebook who sees yeah. you say that and say, Oh, well, you know, Oh, you made $2 million. You should have bonus. You know what I mean? And we, we take care of our employees too. Cause like, you know, I, I don't remember where I heard it. The, the equation of basically what, so, cause there's the whole argument of $15 an hour, $20 an hour, you know, paying, fast food workers and all that type of stuff. And really like what it comes down to, it's how good are you, how $20 good are, an hour? I think it's $15 an hour is what I'm 50, hearing. Yeah, that's no, 15, which yeah. is, uh, yeah, 20. Chick-fil-A might pay more, I don't know, but, um, <laughs> but so, so it's, 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 it's how good are you at your job and how hard is it to replace you? You know what I mean? Like, and, right. and, and that's, and, and the thing is that the people that work for me, I have 
accidentally hired amazing people that it's very difficult to replace them. And, you know, and they, and they get paid very well, you know, like, um, the, 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 the highest person in my, the highest paid person in my, in my company started as an unpaid intern and he worked his way up and worked his way up and worked his way up. And he's been with us. He's been with me for nine years now and he makes a lot of money, you know? And, and the reason why is because he's great at his job and it's very hard to replace him, you know? And, yeah, and, there you go. and that's what it is, you know? And that's, that's what it comes down to. It's like, I don't so know. Make a yourself, single make yourself less. Re you want to raise, you want to yeah. make more money, make yourself less replaceable. Make, make yourself impossible to replace. Right. Yeah. And that's the thing. I mean, like, I mean, and that, that's, that's what it really comes down to. Like, I don't know anyone in the pandemic that, that I would, that, that is obviously very, very good at what they do, has a lot of value that was out of work. You know what I mean? And that doesn't mean that I'm right. just saying, I don't know anyone. I'm saying the people that I know that are really, really good at what they do, every single one of them had plenty of work the entire time and they made more money during the pandemic. And it was because of the fact that like, you know, it tightened up. So now there's more demand for really, really, really Our good people. Tripled. Yeah, ours did too. We yeah. had a record year last year. In 2020 was a record year for us. 2021 was a record year for us. 2022 is gonna be a record year for us, you know? And it's yeah. just because we provide a result and we provide value to people, you know? Let me, let me switch a little gears here. Um, so you, I, I hate to hammer on this done for you thing mm -hmm. because I'm fascinated by, uh, the fact that you've got this to such a level of scale and you're selling these packages and all that, what would you, cause there's probably people listening to this that, oh man, you know, um, cause look, everything has, I believe every, if you do something well, it's going to work out, right? Mm -hmm. Whether it's coaching, whether it's e-commerce, whether it's, um, events, whether it's, uh, done for you, if you do it well and you dedicate yourself to it, yeah. but since you, you do so well with it, I like, I want to ask some questions. What are some other markets? Cause I, I've always told people with done for you, you got to find a client mm -hmm. who's easy to find. And like I said this earlier there, they, when they, when they get a client or mm -hmm. when they get a result, it's worth a lot, Yeah, yeah. you know? So that like, for instance, like I remember back in the day, I said, like, stop, doing marketing for ice cream shops because yeah. when they get a client, they make $2. Yeah. Don't sell to broke people. Yeah. Right. Well, <laughs> yeah, I, but, but I mean, Hagen Doss isn't broke, but you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. like you want, it's easy to get a win. It's, it's easy to get a win. Exactly. Yeah. What, besides the lawyers, mm -hmm. what other markets out there, maybe ones that people aren't thinking of, would um, you think would be good for, for easy wins for done for you? It's tough. I mean, like, I, I think financial services is always good. Mm. Uh, mortgage comp, mortgage. Yeah. Mortgage brokers, things like that. Estate. Yeah. Yeah. Real estate. Um, I think, uh, cosmetic surgeons, um, oh, yeah. cosmetic yeah. surgeons, um, you know, see, I, I know there's a guy, I think his name is it Andrew argue who does a lot with CPAs. Um, yeah. I think yeah. I see, I, I don't know if that would be a good one or not. I, I don't, I haven't researched that market, but you just got to think like, who are the people that, that, that make a lot, who, who are the people that have a very high, average transaction value. Right. Cause that's what it comes down. Like I want, I want to have the opportunity that if I get one client, they can pay for me for the entire year. And like a personal injury attorney, like I've had personal injury attorneys that get a 20, that get a, a case from us that turns into $25 million. You know, like they've paid for us for the rest of their career. You, you know, you know <laughs> like, what idea I, I've always, I, I, or not always, uh, I recently started thinking about it is uh, clients who have big lists, who, mm -hmm. if they just knew how to better sell to them, yeah, they would make way more money. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because like, what, what's one of the hardest things about, uh, client acquisition? It's, it's like, well, you got to go out and market and you got to find clients, right? Mm -hmm. well, what if there was somebody that already had them? Yeah. You yeah. didn't really have to market to them. So that's actually our next move is we're going to be finding influencers. Like I, I there's a, there's a, a particular guy. He's a, a, a fitness guy. He's got 150,000 subscribers on YouTube. He's got like 300,000 followers on Instagram. Um, si similar numbers on Facebook makes 10 grand a month. And <laughs> I was like, I was like, dude, Oh my God. So I don't, I don't have, wow. I don't have the, the, I don't have the bandwidth to do it now, but I want to find people like that. I want to take equity in their company and, and, and just blow it up because I mean, it's like, they just, he, yeah, they know how to get audience them to create like programs and products and they might not. Well, I, I'll find people that are motivated. Like I actually talked to this guy, he's motivated. You know, he's like, just tell me what to do. I don't know what to do. You know what I mean? So people like that, it, as long as they're on board, I'll, I'll do that. I'll teach them what to do. And I mean, cause look, I, like I've only got 6,000 subscribers on YouTube and like my email list is only like 27,000 people. Like my, my numbers are not that big because I'm in a really, I'm in a niche. You know what I mean? But like, if it's someone like a, like a fitness person who can literally target everyone, 
you know, it's just, it makes it, it's, it's like, it's, it's stupid numbers. And if I take what I know and I apply to those numbers, even if I get half the conversion rate that I get, we'll make 10 times as much money, you know? So I think that that's something I'm eventually going to do. I don't have the, I don't have the bandwidth to do it now, but it's, that's probably going to be something we're going to start moving into soon. Hmm, that's cool. Yeah. I, what about, um, now I'm just like brainstorming, but yeah. like, uh, <laughs> what about, what about purchasing them? Like think, think about this. Like, let's say there mm -hmm. was like a, a brand and it wasn't like a personal brand, mm -hmm. but it was just a brand and they did not monetize at all. Or yeah. maybe like you said, they're making like a measly 10 grand a month. Mm -hmm. And so what you do is instead of, um, th the equity thing, you just buy, you just buy them. Mm -hmm. Right. Or, or maybe they're not making anything, yeah. you know, you buy them and then you go in and you create a product and you, you sell it. Or mm -hmm. it could he, maybe even some sort of affiliate thing or something, you know. Um, I don't know. I, thought, I often thought about stuff like yeah. that. I think it's know? interesting. I think you still want them involved though, because like, I mean, like, so this fitness guy, for example, I'm not, I'm not going to be a fitness model. I'm not. Nobody's going to buy fitness, fitness uh, stuff from me. You know what I mean? Um, and also, I don't, I don't want to do the ten thousand hours to learning it all. Yeah, you know, I'd true. rather, I, I've done the, I've done the homework with the this marketing. Is, see, this is what you're talking about, board entrepreneurs. Yeah, exactly. We're just like know? sitting here thinking about things yeah. like, like, you know. And you kind of are buying, like, so I wouldn't do, I would not do a deal like that unless I had equity. So at that point I am buying, I am buying it with, with my, my sweat equity, I guess, yeah. you know, but. Um, I thought, you know what I thought about doing? I thought about uh, going to somebody and, cause like every time I do an event or I mm -hmm. speak, I just sell like crazy like mm. i mean we just do crazy numbers but i thought about like doing something where i would help you know put on an event for somebody mm. uh and sell and then get a cut or whatever but then i was like i don't want to do any of that well that's like <laughs> that's like that's like the pre-pitch and the repitch stuff have you done any of that the uh i've done it some and times and i've made some money doing it but like yeah I, I'm doing so well with our company and my passive stuff with like cryptocurrency and I do have some real estate stuff that at this point mm -hmm. I just um, like I said I just like to drink really good coffee and drink and and read philosophy put books in my penthouse and just not do anything yeah. like I, I've worked so hard for so I think long quality of life at the end of the day yeah. is the most important thing is yeah. like what do you but I always do? get yeah. I always get in my head I always yeah. get the ideas because I'm like I know I could do it and it would be awesome and it'd make a lot of money. But then I'm like, oh, wait a minute. I don't really need could, money. Could you ever actually, could you like, let, let's I mean, let, let's say you, let's say you could sell your business, right? You're, you're, you're it, right now. Somebody just gave you like an insane amount of money. Could you actually retire and not do anything? Or do you have one of those brains where like you'd sit there for a couple of weeks and then you'd be like, I got this idea. I'm going to go, I'm going to do this. Uh, man, that would, yeah. I mean, if, if Probably, yeah, I wouldn't be able, I would have to build something or because I'm a creator, mm -hmm. eh, crazy. Um, so I think if I was gonna do that, I'd have to, if I was like, cause if you gave me a disgusting amount of money, like I'm already financially secure, but mm -hmm. let's say you made me even more financially secure and you gave me like- Somebody gave you an amount of money that you can't turn it down. Like it'd be stupid for you to right. turn it down. Yeah, then to, you mean like an amount that even if I made horrible decisions, like Mike Tyson decisions. Well, I, I don't know. Never... I don't know. See, I don't know what your number is, but I mean, like, you know, if somebody gave you a, a like, so getclients.com, that's your main business, right? Yeah. If they gave you a number that would actually make you sell it. I mean, not, I mean, not, not a billion dollars, obviously, but like, no. I don't know. That'd be great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, but a number that you'd be like, okay, yeah, I'll sell for that. You know, like a reasonable number that that actually, that you'd actually take. And then you're done. I mean, I have to imagine you're pretty much probably set. Um, but could you just sit around and do nothing and just read all day or would you get bored? I know I, I couldn't do it. I get, I'd probably I get, get bored. bored. So I'd have to take on something that would fill that, that mm -hmm. maybe wasn't business. Yeah. Like maybe it was philanthropy, mm -hmm. um, which the funny thing about philanthropy is like, you know, I've always had this thing where if you do it, you probably shouldn't talk about it. Mm -hmm. So like we're doing some stuff right now. And again, I don't like to talk about it, but, um, uh, and I actually have my staff working on it. It's like kind of a cool idea. And if it works out and it works, I'll talk about it because it's sort of like something that a lot of entrepreneurs could do and it would help kids and, mm -hmm. and it's an idea I have and I'll, if it works out, I'll, I'll do something with it. But, um, it would probably be like philanthropy based or art based or, or something that is not necessarily money mm -hmm. because, you know, I don't, if you don't need that, yeah. 
but I guess you're right. I guess I would have to, I guess I would get bored. Mm -hmm. Um, but I might take a year and just do all the things I've ever wanted to do. I probably write an album. Mm -hmm. I probably, um, cause it's funny. I was in a band when I was younger and we like had this whole album and we were going to release it and we were like 95% done. And then my business took off mm -hmm. and so you just left. I was like, yeah, I just <laughs> left and I was making millions of dollars and I was like, well, why do I need an album? And, and, but it's always like been like, man, I should, uh, yeah. I should go back and, and make something like that, mm -hmm. you know? Um, but I, I mean, I don't know. I'm kind of at that point now. Uh, but I see your point. You, 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 if you're a creator, right? Like it's sort of like if you were a musician or a cook or something, maybe like, let's say you were a chef, right? Mm -hmm. And you sold your restaurant and you made $10 million because it was the most popular restaurant. Are you going to stop cooking? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. Are you, like if you are a musician and you had a hit record and you made all this money, like, are you going to stop making music? Even if you didn't release any music, yeah, you, you can just, start playing right, You're just music. doing it for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that's a great question. I think I, I think like anybody, you'd have to be in the position mm -hmm. because the other thing is you don't know who you're going to be in 10 years or five mm -hmm. years or 20 years or even a year. You could be a completely different person that is literally not even remotely close to the person you used to be. So maybe the person you used to be would do something like that. Yeah. But maybe that new person would do something else. Mm -hmm. So it's, I kind of try not to think about it and I like to just let it happen because um, you can talk all day long about what you would do, but when Until you're actually in that position, it's hard to, uh, yeah. When you're in that position, then you find out mm -hmm. what you end up doing. Yeah. So, you yeah. Know. Wow. We got all deep. Yeah. It's so. interesting. I, I know I can't sit like, I'll have a day, even a day where I'm like, we're like my wife and I will be like, all right, we're just going to like Dex the new Dexter came out we're like we're gonna, we're gonna i'm binge watching the old one okay trying to make it through the whole thing yeah and then um and then watch the new one so so we're like four episodes behind so like last week um we were just like yeah we're just gonna take the day and we're just gonna sit here and watch watch dexter all day we made it through like one episode and we like neither of us can sit still like i, yeah. I can't i can't i can't just sit down and oh, watch that's TV. what i would do you know what i mean i'd like, make um, movies okay yeah yeah i've always wanted to make like but, but you have to have a project films. is my point, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you exactly. have to have some sort of project that you're working right. on, you know? Right, So um, we tangent. Um, <laughs> so back to done for you services yeah. and hemorrhoids. So, 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 so you're saying that, <laughs> you're saying that um, uh, in done for you, the biggest thing, just to, just to sort of like come back to that, mm -hmm. the biggest thing is have control of the entire, let me ask you, how do you convince a done for you client to let you have that much control where you have, you, you do their entire process mm -hmm. and you're taking over such a large amount of it from A to Z that like, how do you convince them that, that to do that? I don't know how we did it in the beginning to be totally honest <laughs> with you, because like, and I really don't, I mean, now it's easy because we can say, well, look, you're a criminal defense attorney. Here's, 27 other criminal defense attorneys that we've worked with. Here's the results that we've gotten. Here's videos of them talking about the results that we've gotten. So at some point you're going to have to trust us, you know? So we've got the track record. I mean, like, I love that pitch. At some point you're going to have to trust us. Yeah. I mean like, well, you have to trust somebody unless you're going to do it yourself, you know? So you might as well trust the person that's actually, that can show you that they have the results, you know? Right. Um, on top of that, I create so much content. I've got 1200 YouTube videos at this point, teaching lawyers Jeez. how to market their businesses. You know what I mean? So it's like, 1200. You, you, it's all trust. I mean, that's the biggest thing is that, and it, it's, it's all, it's all goodwill, you know? So when we first started doing it, I wasn't involved with sales. Like the first, like when I started my business, I, my partner, um, who I actually, I bought her out last April or last May. Um, and she's retired now. Um, but she was the salesperson because she used to be national sales director at this really big uh, lawyer marketing company. And I just wanted to do the marketing. I want to be the guy behind the scenes, just like building the websites and, you know, doing the social media and everything. And um, she was the one that went out and got a bunch of, a bunch of clients. And uh, she, because she worked in the legal industry, because she worked for uh, this, this huge marketing company for, for lawyers, she was able, she had re relationships and she was able to bring us our first lawyer and then second lawyer. And then our, you know, then we had four, then we had eight, then we had 12. 
12 and all of a sudden, no, oh, I guess we do marketing for lawyers. You know, like mm. we didn't even plan to niche down and we didn't plan to niche into lawyers. It was completely coincidental just because of the fact that these are the contacts that she had. So because they knew her, she, she could say, trust me, this is what we're doing. Right. So there was the trust there. Then we started getting results. Then we started getting testimonials and then there was trust there. But I don't know how I would do it if I had to start it over, because I think what I'd have to do is I'd have to work with somebody probably for free and get them some sort of result because like the thing that, <laughs> that I love sounds familiar. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, <laughs> but what's the other option? I mean, here's the, actually, no, 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 that's not true. What I would do is I would start creating content and I would just do it. I would just be creating video after video, after video, after video. I do the lead magnet, yeah, I get you it would, in my you, funnel. You, but, yeah. you, but you would have that content you have to build because you trust. already did it. Right. So yeah, that content yeah. wouldn't exist. That's true. That's that true. That content wouldn't exist. I'm saying if I, if, if I lost it all today and I had to start today, it's, it's, it's really difficult because yeah, it's, I, it's I, trust. I, but here's is, the cool thing. When people copy me and people try to rip me off, I don't even do anything about it anymore. I used to send cease and desist letters yeah. and like they stole all my stuff, but I'm like, that I know how much it costs to get a client. And I know that for most people, there's no way they can sustain that. And there's no way they can even like consider that. You know what I mean? Because it, I know that the bar is so high to, to get a law firm to hire you that if all you're doing is copying me and you don't have any other moves because you don't know how to do it yourself, then like, I'm just going to let you spend all your money and run out of steam until you go, you know, go do something else. You know, mm -hmm. I had a guy that literally, he actually was a video editor of mine. And I, it's a crazy story. I, I, I hired him. He was in Bosnia. Right. And I, I, I hired him. He's like, he was 18 years old. I hired him to do some video editing for me. He's really, really good, but he started watching all my stuff. So then he's like, Hey, listen, I want to move to the United States. Cause I guess he was being like persecuted or something. I don't know what it was, but he, he, he wanted to come to the United States. He's like, he's like, if you give me like $2,500 to get my plane ticket over here, um, you know, pay me in advance, then I'll do your video editing for you and I'll give you the credit and everything. So he'd done a lot of work for me. So I gave him the 2,500 bucks. He moved over and he did the videos and he, you know, worked off all the money and everything. And then one day somebody starts sending me videos. They're like, Hey, look at this, this guy. He's got like, he looks exactly like you. And like, I, I, I AB'd and our scripts are literally exactly the same. Even to the point where I said, at this point, I think I'd been doing marketing for lawyers for six years. I'm like, yeah, I've been, I've been helping lawyers for six years, grow their law firm. He changed that. He didn't even change how long he's been doing. He said, I've been doing it for six years. <laughs> he would have been 12 years old when he's marketing law firms. You know what I mean? Like, wow. so I just, and, and sure enough, like, I mean, I called him out on it and it, you know, it was this huge betrayal cause I, I helped him out. Um, and, uh, so, but you know, I mean, he was, he was done after a couple of weeks cause he didn't have any money. Cause he See, didn't, that, you that's know, that's the thing is, is when people copy you, yeah. you got to realize that the reason they're copying you is because they have absolutely no grit, right? They exactly. have no hustle mm -hmm. and they have no discipline. Yeah. And so they have to just say, I'm going to, I'm going to copy somebody else mm -hmm. uh, and copy their business and just do exactly what they're doing because I don't have the stuff, mm -hmm. right? I, I don't have it here. And if they don't have it here, like you said, it'll mm -hmm. be two weeks or a month or a couple yeah. months and they'll be out. So by the time you could even send, uh, do, do anything about it, they're already failed. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing is focus on you, yeah, right? Exactly. Focus on you because if somebody else is, you know, winners, focus on winning losers mm -hmm. focus on winners mm -hmm. so yeah that's true yeah, yeah that's a good point yeah i mean that's the thing is that it's like you know that they're doing it because they can't figure out how to do it on their own and you know and look nothing about this is easy like that that's that's and and but honestly that's what i love about it i love the fact that it's so difficult because right because i'm willing to do the work that most people aren't willing right. to do you know don't you get and because I, I get it in my business i'm sure you do people will come to you and they say teach me how to make a bunch of money teach mm -hmm. me how to have this amazing result but then when you start you, you realize that a lot of those people they don't want to work to do it they yeah. don't want to be good mm -hmm. they just want to have it handed to them yeah and so it's it's sort of like you know the filter the protection that you have as, a, as an entrepreneur or a business owner is that it's hard mm -hmm. so if you're willing to do the hard thing you automatically filter out your competition yeah because most people aren't willing to do the hard thing so to me it's like a good thing it's mm -hmm. like if it's hard i don't want to do things that's easy because then everybody can do it i want to do things that's hard so mm -hmm. i do things that's hard then I don't have a lot of people hanging around trying to do the same thing. Exactly. Right. Yeah. And if you don't have that mindset, then you shouldn't be there. 
Yeah, right? Exactly. Like you don't deserve like to be a business. Everybody owner. wants to be Michael Jordan, but nobody wants to spend 12 hours a day in the gym. You know, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. they don't want, they don't want to yeah. practice basketball. I, exactly. You know? you know, and it's just like, I mean, like, look, I, I'm up at 5 a.m. every day. You know, I'm reading, I'm, I'm exercising. There isn't an exercising one for my body, but also it's, it's for my mind, you know, being active and everything. And I do things that I don't want to do. And because of, I mean, like the other thing is that I fail, I wouldn't say I failed. I don't think I've ever failed at anything because the way that I look at, I've gotten different results than I expected. You know what right. I mean? Like failure I, is failure is the data for success. Exactly. Well, if I, I look at failure, if I didn't learn something from my mistake, you know what I mean? Like, or if I didn't get something like, so I started my first business I ever had, I was 19, right? I didn't make a hundred thousand dollars a year until I was 30. So 11 years was basically me trying different things and learning different things. And like, mm -hmm. I used to have this website called Digital Firestarter. And what we did was we would interview like athletes and celebrities and, and bands and things like that in like fish out of water. Like, so, you know, the band seven dust, right? I love seven we, dust. we took them miniature golfing. Right. And we filmed the whole thing. We did an interview with them. Um, the band, uh, kill switch engage, you know, those guys, Yes. we took them is, to, now you're talking my, we took them to, so we took them to a uh, gator land in Orlando and like wrestled alligators with them. How, um, why, wait, how did you, I, I want to wrestle alligators <laughs> with seven dust. Well, yeah. How did this happen? Okay. So, all right. So I started a concert promotions business, uh, so I got fired. Okay. So graduated from law school or sorry, graduated from college, 2006, uh, worked at the, the restaurant and then I worked at a private firm and then I got fired from the private firm. And I was like, I need to be an entrepreneur. I don't want to go to law school. I don't want to do this. I am a terrible employee. I need to start my own business. Mm. So my grandmother loaned me $20,000. Um, and I got into concert promoting. And I actually got into Christian concert promoting, which is funny because I was raised Jewish, right? So okay. I'm this Jewish guy and I'm, and I, I got hooked up with long, long story short, how I got, or long story, how I got into Christian concerts, but we used to do, um, concerts with the band, uh, Skillet. Do you know who they are? Yeah, I know Skillet. Yeah. So we did Skillet, a uh, thousand foot crutch. Yep. Um, you know, so we, we did a lot of, uh, a lot of any, anything from small clubs to like, we did arena shows. Um, and then, and we were pretty successful. I don't know. We, we I didn't make a ton of money at it, but we, we, we made a little bit of money. Um, and then Live Nation and Ticketmaster merged. And what that meant was that most of the buildings that we were doing concerts in were owned by Live Nation, which meant that now Ticketmaster, it was all, it was all exclusive with Ticketmaster and Ticketmaster and Live Nation were basically competing and putting a lot of the smaller promoters out of business. So I was working with this other guy and we started a marketing company. Um, and Oh, I, no, actually before that, what happened was, so I got out of that, but I knew how to contact all of these celebrities and athletes. It's just, you call the manager, you know what I mean? Um, and I was living in Orlando and I knew that lots of bands would come down to Orlando or they'd be in Tampa because House of Blues was in Orlando um, or they'd be in Tampa. So I was like, you know, I've got access to all these people. How can I what can I do with this? Cause it was, I was dream 100ing, 100ing people before I realized that I was. Cause I, my idea was that if I create a website and let's say I get seven dust on there and I do an interview with them and then it's an inter interesting interview and we tell seven dust to market it to their fans, then seven dust, then we're going to get lots of traffic from people who like seven dust and we're going to get all these, all this, uh, all, all this publicity. Right. And why did seven dust agree to go golfing with you or whatever? Uh, miniature golf. Miniature um, golf. well, so basically I'm, I'm, I'm a really good BSer, right? So the first one was the hardest one because we didn't have, cause like, I, I remember it was uh, authority zero. Do you remember authority zero? Yeah. So the authority zero head PE yep. and, Man, a you're going and a tray you. Yeah. <laughs> authority zero head PE and a tray you. And I had all three of them on the, on the line. I mean like, you know, I was talking to all of them and I was basically playing them off one another. I was like, well, I think we're going to, you know, we're taking authority zero to Ripley's believe it or not. So I think we can squeeze head P. I think we can take you up in hot air balloons probably like on Tuesday, if we're not busy working with a tray you on that day. So I was basically just totally BSing. Right. And somehow they all got booked. So, <laughs> so, oh, so man. we took, we took a tray you or sorry. So we did a boxing match with a tray you where the lead singer of a tray you, cause he's into like, uh, uh, MMA and like, uh, Muay Thai. Yeah. And stuff like that. Um, uh, and, and, uh, my friend Ian, actually the same, the, my partner in the hemorrhoid business, cause he's a stand-up comedian. This is how I met him because I needed a host for the show. So he was into boxing also. So they went and we, we did a, a boxing match between him and the lead singer of Atreyu. Um, we took seven dust up in hot air balloons in Orlando. We took, um, or not seven dust. We took head PE 
up in hot air balloons in Orlando. We did. We took Ripley's Believe It or Not to the uh, to the, the museum, and then once we had that, then we went to all the other booking agents, all the other people, all the other publicists, and we we're like, hey, listen, we've already worked with Head PE, we've already worked with Atreyu, we've already worked with Authority Zero. I'm pretty sure we've got all these people. You know what I mean? And it just snowballed from there, and we ended up doing like 80 or 90 interviews. And the thing that you realize, like, there's a quote that I heard from Mark Hoppus. Uh, the bass player from Blink-182. He's like, being on tour is all about finding something better to do. Because it's not like the days of Motley Crue where they're just sitting around doing coke and like, you know, and hookers all day, right? <laughs> they're bored. So they're sitting at they're sitting at Gatorland, or sorry, they're sitting at House of Blues just sitting on trying to find something to do. I get the tour manager's contact information. I'm like, hey, you guys want to go do indoor skydiving? Or you guys want to go, uh, you know, go wrestle some alligators with us? Or, you know, like, do all this cool stuff? And they're like, yeah, we're, what else do we have to do? So we're basically giving and how them. Did you pre who were you? Like, how did you present yourself? I was just, this, I was the owner of Digital Firestarter. So, I mean, that's... Did they even ask what that was or what your purpose was? Yeah, I mean, it's like we're building a web. Oh, we also, <laughs> we had this. So, you, like, are these we had a letter of so intent. Drugged out that we like, had, yeah. We had a letter of intent from PBS where basically I had this letter of intent. Like, I knew the guy who ran, who, were, who was the station manager at the PBS station in Daytona Beach, right? So, I was like, uh, I was like, I want to put this show together. Can you, um, can you give us a letter that you're interested in putting the show on the air? So then I would, so basically what I'd say, I was like, it's going to be on PBS, which was total BS. And not only that, but also we've also worked with all these other bands. And then, um, and then we put together like a sizzle reel and like, yeah, I mean, we had some big names on there so and it was all the interviews. They're all on YouTube right now, but I didn't do anything <laughs> so with didn't it. didn't get on PBS. I didn't do anything with it. No, no, no. But, um, it's the type of thing where it's like, if I would have known then what I know now about marketing, like this would have been the biggest show ever. This was like bef before Twitter was really big and behind before like, you know, all the Instagram reality Are they still series. On YouTube? Yeah, yeah, they're still on. It's called Digital Firestarter. You can see, dude, we did like, uh, so like, let me think, like Sublime, right? Sublime with Rome. Um, we took them, actually they were in St. Pete. We did a lot of stuff in St. Pete um, because of uh, Janice Landing. Yeah. So um, yeah, Sublime, we took them and went like skeet shooting with uh, Sublime. And, and you uh, interviewed him while you were doing yeah, it? Yeah, we inter yeah, so we talked to him. We do interviews while we're skeet shooting. So what, 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 what did you get out of that? Was, I, okay, so. You had to pay for all this stuff. Well, I gave equity in the company to the camera guy and to the director. You know what I mean? So basically. Yeah, you just had to pay for the skeet shooting and the indoor skydiving. No, 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 no. I didn't pay for any of that. Because I went to the company, I was like, "Hey, listen. Um, okay, here's a perfect example, oh. right? So I go to I go to okay. So three doors down, you know, who three doors down is right. Of course. So they were in you Orlando. Keep asking me if I know all my <laughs> so, bands that I listen I, to. Because my I because I always life. forget. Most people, don't, I don't, I don't know. So <laughs> we call them and. Um, and I'm like, hey, listen. And Three Doors Down was an A-list, A-list act at this oh, point, yeah. right? So they were performing at at Universal. So I'm like, I call them up. I'm like, hey, uh, we're working with MetLife. We want to take you guys up in the MetLife Blimp because the MetLife Blimp happened to be in uh, in Orlando because there was like the owner Arnold Palmer. So then you go golf to MetLife. Then you I go say, to MetLife. Hey, three Doors Like, hey, Three Doors Down really wants to go up in the Blimp. Are you, you know? And like, and everybody's like, yeah, that sounds awesome. So then we <sighs> sent this guy. His name's Steven, and he borrowed his mom's minivan. And he's like, I mean, he's like this 20 year old kid. He borrows his mom's minivan. He goes to Orlando. He goes, picks up three doors down in his mom's minivan. We bring him to the MetLife blimp and then we, um, film the entire thing, you know, like, so we did, I mean, we did, we like worked with saliva. We worked with, um, as I lay dying, we worked with, um, there's so many people, uh, hinder, um, like Gosh, we did and we, and we would do some All funny these stuff bands that I just like, yeah, you got to check it out. It's, we did some I'm really gonna, funny I am, stuff. I'm going to go watch were, yeah. were you interviewing him? Were, were uh, you? No, no, I wasn't. I'm, I'm in some of them, I'm, I'm in the newfound glory interview. We took, um, we took newfound glory to at Disney. There used to be this racetrack called Richard Petty's racing experience. Um, uh, and basically you could drive NASCAR yeah. cars. So we went to, uh, we took uh, newfound glory there. You know what I mean? So like, so yeah, we did some cool stuff. And that actually, to answer your question, actually it might've been my question. If I was to sell my business, I would probably do that again because I've never had more well, fun. Well, not now, now that you've just admitted. <laughs> well, <laughs> well. <laughs> They're like, I saw your interview. <laughs> We're gonna have to censor this part of the interview. No, but I mean, that, that, that's, that was like the most fun I've ever had doing anything. I just didn't know how to make any money at it back then. Cause I didn't know, like I said, if I knew then what I know now, like, 
it, it would have been it would have been all over it would have been sold to Netflix or been sold Hulu or something like that you know so cool, man. but um that's yeah, a crazy check it out it's a digital fire it's a crazy starter story. And well, I, oh, oh back to my story though so that was the business I started it didn't work but I learned how to do video editing I learned how to do, I learned how right. to do cameras uh, I know how to how to you know, use a camera I learned DS I learned what ISO is and what you know uh, aperture is and all that stuff on the cameras and then I took that knowledge in my current business and I started charging five thousand dollars for a video shoot for a lawyer you know what I mean so it's mm. like that business didn't succeed but I learned how to I learned how to get around gatekeepers I learned how to do video editing you know what I mean like so much stuff so it's like I didn't make any money so I didn't fail I just didn't get the outcome that I was expecting you know what I mean and that's how I look at that's how I look at my entire life is I've never failed at anything I just it, I just didn't get the right the same outcome that I was expecting to get but I walked away with knowledge I walked away with a, a hell of a good time you know and uh so so that's how it's been with everything that I've done you know don't isn't it crazy how the way in which you frame how you see that experience mm -hmm. in the world and failure and success is the very reason mm -hmm. why life has worked out for you and you've built a multi-million dollar company yeah and it you know a lot of times people get caught up in the tactics mm -hmm. and they don't realize that just the lens in which you see the world really dictates how your world will evolve mm -hmm. and sometimes you just have to change your lens yeah it's like it's like uh rich dad poor dad um poor, what's the quote poor people say i can't afford that rich people say how, how can, can i afford, I afford that? it yeah, yeah and it's 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 not just for buying things it's you know poor people say oh head pe would never get in a hot air balloon with me and then i say well wait a second how can i convince them to, to do, do this it. and then how can i not only that how can i get the hot air balloon company to do it for me for free and actually make a special trip just for right. us well that, that's you know, like, like that's the thing with like you know i, I tell sales reps this mm -hmm. or or people that are you know if, if a client gets on the phone right and they say well what if it doesn't work mm -hmm. you know because we have that well, what if it doesn't work well yeah. it's like well that question is why it won't work you need mm -hmm. to be asking yourself how can i make it work yeah how awesome is it going to be when it does work right you know? and 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 if you can't get over that there's no there's nobody in this world that can help you yeah you know dude it's been awesome man yeah, this, it's has been been, fun. this has been great i, I think, don't know what uh, we talked about for two hours but it's been a lot of fun yeah well i think, I think there was a lot of nuggets in there about um just how to think about things how to approach things yeah and you know i think it's great like all these stories that wrapped up into you know how you did what you did mm -hmm. um and also your approach and your approach to done for you and 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 taking the whole uh you know the whole process on so that you don't get caught up in just half the process or a quarter of the process mm -hmm. um yeah that's uh that's some awesome stuff so yeah, dude thank you so much for coming on bro thanks for coming thank on you, man. thanks for having me i appreciate yeah, it absolutely